Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Game Former Show podcast. I'm Ben Hansen and joined by Matt Burtz. Hello, sir. Joined by Andrew Reiner. Hi. Hey, welcome, guys. We have a hell of a show. It's one of those where like you don't know what's going to land this week. It's like, oh, we have a few games to talk about, I guess. And then, bam, Pokemon on Switch. Bam, a new Fallout game. Burtz is back from London, ready to talk about Battlefield Five. There's going to be a lot to cover. So we're covering all those games. Oh, gosh, even more stuff beyond that. And then we have community emails. Hopefully Andy Max is going to be on the email section what? For, some, for some bigger news. Uh, and then back half of the show, we're visited by a Ghost of Christmas Past with Tim Turry huh. coming back to talk about Mega Man 11. He won't shut up about that game. Yeah, he seriously won't. It's like he's getting paid to talk about that game. I don't understand it at all. But hey, Fallout. Yeah. New Fallout game was announced this week. Fallout 76. What a weird world. Reiner, you seem captivated by that live stream. Yeah, I, I could <laughs> not take my eyes off the 24-hour bobblehead a thon. I don't know what you want to call that. Uh, but man, they were getting close to like Devolver press conference territory. If they would have announced it was like a remaster of Fallout 3 for Switch. People would have rioted. Yeah, yeah, the internet would be on fire right yeah. now. Like literally on fire. Or Fallout Shelter 2. Yeah. Right, right. Well, I guess I kind of enjoyed it, but still. But yeah, it was just like a live stream that was filming a monitor with like the please stand by thing and the bobblehead. And only for like 24 hours and they announced Fallout 76. Yeah, so... It's a new Fallout game, from what we could tell, uh-huh. but not new enough or similar enough, maybe is a better word, to say it's Fallout 5. So I think the 76 is implying it's going to be a different type of experience, and there's a bunch of rumors flying around that it's yeah. going to be some kind of like continued online experience. Uh, Kotaku out there, uh, Jason Schreier, has some sources saying that it's uh, maybe in line with something like Rust. Which is very odd. And he said that it started out, uh, this is in the Kotaku piece as well, that it started out uh, as like multiplayer testing for Fallout 4. And then eventually transitioned to like, let's make it its own game. But from that teaser trailer, no hint of any of that. The teaser trailer is just kind of environment shots showing this Vault 76. There are well, some have, hints, actually. the trophies. You know, if you look oh. at closely at the trophies, there's one for like surviving out in the, the, the crazy nuclear wasteland alone. There was one for like eating something and surviving... You know, like yeah, and eating a radiated fruit or something. Yeah, so, so the, the lore that we know about Vault 76 uh, based on Fallout 3 and 4 is that it was a vault that was opened 20 years after the nukes dropped. So it was one of the first ones before there were settlements. Okay. So it, it definitely kind of fits in that space of like if you want to do a more survival experience. And we know that Bethesda likes that. You know, uh, obviously New Vegas had their... Uh, their mode, and then in Fallout 4, they had the survive mode. So it kind of fits with stuff they've already toyed with in the world. That's interesting. Yeah, so it, what, on the computer, I believe it says it takes place in 2102, or that's the date on the computer at least. And so according to Wikipedia, you know, the nuclear holocaust happens in 2077. So trying to figure out that time was still a little bit confusing. 25 years? Yeah, yeah. So how do you think this works? You start in Vault 76, then you go out... Whoa, and wait, then you, you start in a vault? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, hear me out, whoa. though. Hear me out. You go out, compete with other players, get trophies, and then bring them back down? Or is that just a cheeky nod and you're not actually going to be, like, building out Vault 76? I wonder if it's, like, if those trophies really are a part of the experience where it is, like, a set amount of time you're out there, and then they kind of reward players at the end of it? Yeah. Uh, I don't think people would like that from Fallout. I think that I've, seems like a big departure from what those games have been in the past. And that trailer definitely teases more of the same. That's the thing. I wonder how many people are going to be burned when they show more in theory at E3 and if they learn that like it's multiplayer focus because I feel like there's those Bethesda fans where that's yeah. just that. You can't even mention that. That's the kryptonite, you know? And people were talking about maybe Elder Scrolls Online would be followed up by a Fallout Online and it seemed like people weren't even really into that idea. Yeah. But if they can kind of tiptoe in that direction by just having a few other players in kind of like a Rust type environment, if maybe you, it'd be cool. If you could deliver a full Fallout experience with quests and all that stuff, and then have other people with you, like building your settlement, I'm 100% on board with that. Wait like, a minute. I just realized, if this is a multiplayer environment, how are VATs going to work? Maybe VATs take a break. Oh, people aren't going to like that. Maybe the tech isn't around yet. Or I oh, guess it would be, but yeah. that's confusing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe we're all wrong. Also, Maybe it's just a new Fallout side story. Could Kinda be, like New Vegas. but I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. So what they said that they were proud in the tweets and whatnot coming from Bethesda. Like, this is a Bethesda Game Studios game. This is Todd Howard as yeah. hell. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, they have a lot of studios under that umbrella now. Yeah, exactly. And so they opened a Montreal studio a while back that officially is labeled Bethesda Game Studios as well. And then the Battlecry studio was converted and that became 
Bethesda Game Studios. And according to the Kotaku piece, that's the studio that's kind of spearheading this effort. I'm Which sure would make sense if it's going online because what they were doing was more in the online space, right? Right, right. And that is a studio that's, I think, right on top of Arcane Austin. It's like one floor up, which is kind of fun that they're all right next to each other now and whatnot. Uh, I could see that. I, I mean, Todd maybe is the visionary behind the whole project. And yeah. he's just overseeing that. You know, there's the rumored game Starfield, which is a new IP, which I really, really want him to do. Oh, yeah. A new IP, like take yeah. a break from these these series he's been working on forever. And then obviously he told Keeley, I think at last year's E3 Coliseum, that after two big projects, we know what one of them is now, 76, yeah. that then they'll revisit Elder Scrolls. So that will be like the third game, which is, what, what is the timing on that? Five years from now? Probably. Six years from now? I, I mean, with all the manpower, maybe they can speed it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, maybe with three studios. studios. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Do you think uh, Obsidian heard about this announcement and just like punched through their hat like Ross Perot? Yeah, I don't Pressure. know. I, I don't know. I mean, because they were rumored to be working on the New Orleans. New Orleans, one, right? yeah. Oh, really? What is this one? I haven't heard yeah. about this. That was an old rumor that they were working on a Fallout New Orleans and that kind of got shuttered when, and they went another direction and started pillars oh oh i thought that was the xbox game like launch game for xbox one that got canceled too but it's obsidian's history is a jumbled mess it's always super they certainly have worked with more people and done more things and stopped working on more things than most studios they've seen a lot of the industry yeah but fallout 76 in theory more 83 that should be exciting yeah that's got to be the big push right rage and fallout but pete hines did tweet that they have more games than they've ever had well, you, so, the prey, if they're gonna, it sounds like there's a prey yeah, expansion. The moon. That's right. Yeah, 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 the weird moon teases and stuff. Uh, what else could they have? Some mobile game. Yeah, I'm more sure. of their Starfield. card game. Yeah. More from ESO. Uh, yep. All right, know. that's exciting enough. Fallout Shelter 2, whatever. I don't know. Keep laying it on. Do you think Starfield's going to be a mobile game, like some rumors suggest? I hope not. Yeah? I hope it's a big AAA Todd Howard production. If it is, New maybe IP. it means Elder Scrolls will come up quicker, though. You never quite know. I'd rather have Starfield than Elder Scrolls. Really? Spent a lot of time in those woods. That's true. I tell you. That's true. Uh, speaking of spending time in woods, I don't know, World War II, uh, Battlefield <laughs> Five, Bert's. Hell of what, a transition there. What is this? You went to London for this Trevor Noah event? Yeah. You, you think, uh, okay, World War II, going to London, maybe that'll be in the bunkers, Churchill's bunkers. No, we were in the Gfinity Arena, which is an esports arena, which is really just a retrofitted studio or a theater in a movie theater. <laughs> I watched that stream and I watched Call of Duty's stream as well. And this stream was a little lackluster. It was a lot of just sitting around with the Dice developers and Trevor Noah trying to crack wise, I guess. But I thought Trevor did a pretty good job. He was more natural than a lot of these hosts. Um, he started really clunky, but once he got into the rhythm of just reacting as opposed to reading scripted stuff, yeah. I thought he settled in. But it was a weird event. I mean, so the way we experienced it, we saw the game for three hours before that. Oh, we really? talked about it. Yeah, we got a, a like a cover story worthy dive into the mechanics of the game, and then they showed us the trailer, which has that, you know, that EA grease all over it. It, it just <laughs> it does not really sell the game that well. I don't feel it's it's a hell of a trailer, but I don't know if it conveys exactly what's great about the game. But yeah. watching it again, it's kind of cool. There's like there's no soundtrack. It's all one shot. It's a cool style. It yeah, just, it's a cool style. It I don't just, know if I'm excited about the gameplay from that trailer. It feels weird, you know, like and everything that you see in that trailer is actually in the game. So when you see a lady you know, on her back, you know, scooching back and shooting, like that's a new mechanic in the game. You can okay. pick up a grenade that somebody else threw and, you know, hopefully that cuts down on the grenade spam. Like everything you saw in there is in the game, including the customization that pissed everybody off. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, I guess I had the deep download in the game and like as a Battlefield purist who I've been playing that game since it began, I still play every month. You know, I love that game. The stuff they told me about what they're doing to squads and how they're changing the multiplayer, I'm stoked about. Okay, so what's the biggest takeaway? What's the biggest shakeup to the formula here? So you, you remember operations mode from Battlefield 1 where yeah. it's kind of like the it's a long form match play where it can take place over multiple maps. They're building on top of that with grand operations, which is also changing the modes you're playing within those little segments of the match. So that can, seems kind of superficial, doesn't it? Like, all right, we're going to switch around to Conquest for this section and then go back to Rush, yada, yada, yada. Maybe, Smart idea, but, but they have a, they're adding new modes to the mix and they're always going to be evolving. So the Grand Operation is a part of the new live service. So it's going to change all the time what modes are going to be there when they're focusing on a particular theater of war. They're going to change it so it fits historically, you know, so it does maintain some of the realism that the fans were pining for when they saw ladies with robot arms. Right. Um, well, I mean, that 
by the way, that biotic arm thing is era specific. Like, I don't think they're doing anything sci-fi. I think it is something they saw like in yeah. old tapes. Everything's and, pulled from something yeah, somewhere along yeah, the I don't. They're not going stuff. Terminator or anything like that with this. Yeah, did it seem wackier in general? Did it seem pretty grounded based on the hours of the that stuff you that saw? I like? Yeah, I mean, the gameplay is going more realistic. So you're starting with less resources to make you more dependent on your squad members. Um, everybody can heal each other or pull somebody from behind cover to heal. It just takes longer if you're not a medic. The medic gives you a, a health buff and you can heal way faster. Okay. They're, they're, uh, they're changing a lot of the ways. Like, you know, the destructibility has always been a factor in this game. And, you know, at the end of a match, everything's decimated. They're giving you fortification tools. So when you've taken a, a capture point and you know people are going to be coming in, you got to uh, basically resupply. You can build a resupply point and then you can refortify some of the broken down buildings to give you something to hide behind. Yeah. So I was watching the stream with the archive chat on there, which. It was a real hoot. Yeah, but uh, during sure. that part in particular, people were outraged. Like, don't turn my battlefield into Fortnite. Yeah, it's F not you, Fortnite. Fortnite. It's so controlled. You know, okay. like everybody can build some stuff, but the only the engineer class can build the real stuff that you want. Like, you know, like stationary weapons and things like that. So it, it's just creating squad dependence and it's rewarding squad dependence as well. If as you do objectives that your squad leader is uh, marking on the map, you're developing a, a, a resource pool of points that you can spend for like a big ticket item. Maybe you need a supply drop because you're in the middle of nowhere and you need, uh, you know, reinforcements in terms of bullets and health packs. Maybe you uh, can drop in a really specialized tank that only your squad can use. Or like the high end stuff is like V1 rockets that you can shoot that actually create like a, a blast blowback that'll knock people back. And, uh, you know, punch a hole through a defense. Like, they're adding stuff that it's kind of like a squad kill streak, I guess you could say. Okay. That's cool. Huh. But, but you can only get that stuff. Like, lone wolves get nothing. They get none of this. And they also, one of my biggest pet peeves is the guys that don't PT the FO, play the effing objective. They uh -huh. sit up on a ridge and they snipe all day and they, they're fine. You're not fine anymore. Your health doesn't regen. If That's you get interesting. Hit with bullets, you're going to have to go, you know, get healed up and if you're running out of ammo you're going to have to go back and get more ammo right so hopefully it cuts down on some of those annoyances that have always been a part of the battlefield experience that's pretty smart so in the pitch uh for the live stream they said we want to focus on like some unseen locations of world war ii because we're doing the war stories again which yep. i liked in battlefield one that yeah. was kind of cool just little vignettes quick storytelling some were better than others but with the maps now that you've seen are they focusing on like the classics from 1942 and bringing those back that i asked them about that obviously uh they they were playing coy. There, there's no doubt you're going to see like some of the, the fan favorites. But they also said they're using inspiration from some of those early maps to inform how they're doing their new modes and their new maps. So I think huh. some parts are going to be repurposed in interesting ways sure. where if you played 1942, you might go, oh, wow, they took that from this map. You know, there's going to be some of that integration. Um, but th they are focusing on new theaters of war. You're going to be fighting an Arctic war in Norway. You know, like they're, the stuff that they teased was like pre-fall of Europe. Okay. You know, which movies don't really explore. You know, we saw a little bit of that in Dunkirk, but you know, the the big beats, the the Saving Private Ryan's, the Band of Brothers TV shows, you know, the all the other World War II video games you've ever played have focused on what happens once the Americans get there. Right. You know, right. and they're looking at the war from a wider lens, and I think there's gonna be a lot of interesting things they can do. From a nice Swedish lens. Yeah. <laughs> on skis. <laughs> what? Yeah, like one of the concept arts had a guy on. Oh, okay, skis. that's fun. That That's could be a all good I'm going to do. I'm going to just play that map. <laughs> just down God. I go. I got excited watching that live stream. We're at Battlefield 1. I played the war stories. I enjoyed it. I didn't really get into the multiplayer at all, but I love 1942 and seeing this return. It's like, wait a minute. I think I'm going to get into this this yeah, time. Yeah, parachuting's back, you know, Ooh. dropping behind enemy lines. Yep. There's a new mode called Airborne that one of the teams starts on a plane and you have to parachute behind enemy lines to take out the artillery. And the teams that are entrenched in the defensive positions can fire at those planes. And if you nail one or four or five guys are waiting to jump out, you're going to score a lot of points. You know, it sounds like they're doing some fun stuff. Cool. That we haven't had in Battlefield for a while. Yeah. Also, co-ops coming back for the first time since uh -huh. 3, uh -huh. I think is what yeah, they were saying. Yeah, with a new mode called Combined Arms. Okay. Which, again, is they're playing on the paratrooper. Arms sewn idea. together <laughs> with <Yes>. two people. <laughs> it's like a three-legged race. <laughs> so we don't know a lot about that. I think they're going to talk about that after E3. Uh, so we'll find out more about what that is and how it plays out. And then the other big part is, you know, they're killing premium. No more yes. premium. That no got a boxes. huge reaction yeah. from the crowd. Yeah. So what does that mean exactly? So it means a couple things. One, the, the community will no longer be fragmented between the haves and have-nots. You know, like... 
Battlefield's always pumped a ton of maps out and millions of players, I'm pretty sure millions, I don't think I've ever seen actual stats, but everybody I know that is in the Battlefield community always buys that because you want the new maps, right? You want the new stuff. Um, now everybody's going to be on the same playing field, but what I'm curious to learn is like, so how many fewer maps are we talking now? Right. Like how many fewer modes as it goes on as a live service? Because you look at games like Rainbow Six Siege, it only has 18 maps. It came out in 2015. Battlefield 1 had 32 maps. It came out in 2016. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I had no idea it got that high. That's yeah, it's insane. like four per, you know, like they, they really push, you know, like new experiences. But they didn't explain any benchmark of like, we will have the same amount of maps that Battlefield 1 did by the end of its life. No, they, like they would not talk numbers. All they said yeah. is that they're really making sure there's going to be new stuff for you all the time. And they also <laughs> said it's it's not just like the competitive multiplayer. There are going to be potentially new war stories. Oh, that's and awesome. And new combined arms missions as you push into new months. New and war they're gonna, story. They're going to be kind of themed based around theaters of war as well. They're chapter based. Okay. Yeah, like Endor. You're, you're going to oh, have the Battle fantastic. of Endor. Will be one I of heard them. that one's really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and, I was uh, amazed by that crazy reaction to getting rid of the, the premium pass and all that stuff. Like, can you just give me a read on the Battlefield community's thoughts on Battlefield 1 at this point? Is it people were pissed about that, but overall they were happy with that game? Generally, you know, like I think the weapon variety really kind of started to wane in the later, you know, months of Battlefield 1. You okay. know, like, it felt a little too samey. Um, I think people are really excited to get back to a, a little more advanced, you know, artillery. A little bit more. Yeah. little bit more. Less horses, you know, more actual like cannons. Right, right. Less freaky looking tanks, more just some good classic Yeah, good ass classic tanks. tigers, you know, like I, I think Sherman's, you know, people are going to be excited about that stuff. And I, I mean, it's it's 16 years ago was the last time we had a World War II proper battlefield game yeah. you know they did 1943 but right, that was right. just a reimagining of classic maps heroes was the cartoon version of world yeah, war ii no, we, I don't, we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> i like but, heroes David. oh it's awful no normandy none well, of those familiar well, things right yeah i mean i wouldn't be surprised if they do something way they've got to have that omaha line. beach map man it's got to come back yeah that wake island so will probably be it's guaranteed you know like yeah they that can't one's classic turn year two like maybe that. yeah i don't know but i mean this is something and like you wonder, like, how are you going to make up all that lost money? You know, those those premium packs were expensive. Um, so yeah. they're, they're, there's no loot boxes. They've said that. There is a lot of customization. And I think that's going to be, they're going to go for more of an Overwatch. Like, oh, I really want that costume or I want that accessory. Because this is the first game where you can actually customize your soldier head to toe in Battlefield. Hmm. You know, it's not just your weapons. There's like seven or eight points of customization on weapons now that are cosmetic. There's... Your arms, your accessories, your torso. Things are going to get pretty whack, yeah. There's yeah. going to be like a thousand different leather jackets. I guarantee <laughs> yeah. it. Like just like different, different things different logos. Yeah. yeah. And, oh. it, you know, a lot of people were pissed off about that. They want the authenticity. But, I mean, we're talking about a game where you can, like, stand on the wing of a plane that's in the air and shoot a rocket that's off what of it, people you know, like, like about battlefield yeah, is the that insane battlefield moment happened back in the day <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> my you grandpa know. he was one of those wing surfers mm -hmm. yeah Ken Dave, david milner way too much david milner our <laughs> australia editor tweeted out that picture of like the two guys with flamethrowers standing right. on a camel you know like people have fun in that mo it's a yeah. lot of fun yeah. the sandbox emergent experience is what battlefield's all about now, yeah we're not talking like customization like fortnite with like the Energizer bunny, pink bunny running around. Like, this is going to be still somewhat grounded. It looks a little more grounded. They're certainly taking liberties. Yeah. There's face paint. I'm I'm really hoping some of that stuff's really hard to get. I don't want everybody on my team with pink face paint. Yeah. You know, like, there, there is a line that I hope they don't cross. And the Swedes are usually tasteful, so I'm hoping that they'll show some restraint. You know? An artistic bunch. Yeah, don't paint a target on your face. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, there were rumors as well that Battlefield Five a while ago was testing out a Battle Royale mode. Any hint of that? Do you think it's conceivable they would add that post-launch in the service? Unfortunately, yes. I, I mean, when I talked about it to them, they didn't really say anything, but yeah. it sounds like, I think it was GameSpot got something out of them that sounded like, they're like, oh, it'd be a natural fit. But I was really proud of them that they showed the restraint to not do it. You know, like, look within, look at what makes your product special and double down on that instead of chasing a trend because Battlefield is still really unique. But as long as that Conquest sets. and Rush stuff, as long as it's all still there, like are you opposed fine, to them yeah. just adding that in the future? I, I want to see it. I guess not, as long as it doesn't compromise the other stuff. That, yeah. That would be my argument as I mean, a it, purist. It right? makes sense, right? Like I would love to see a 100 player or 64 player or whatever battle royale come down to like two people in helicopters or tanks exactly It'd be so cool and call of duty's doing that right like you're adding land air and sea vehicles but, yeah but i mean their announcement was like 
it's coming. And we're like, can we see it? And they're like, no. <laughs> no I wonder how far there. along that is. Yeah, who knows? If We don't even know if that's coming at launch. You know, yeah. It could be added in later, like a Battlefield Five. if they do decide to go that way. I want to see it. As long as it doesn't take anything yeah. away, I definitely want to see what they would do with that mode in that, in that series. Uh, Battlefield Five. when's it coming again? In October. October. There's like the four 27th? different dates because it's EA and they have Oh, the, that's right. You know, like <laughs> I think the 11th is one of the dates, the 14th. The 19th yeah. is the 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 final day when the game's out. Okay. If you're not in the play first or you're not in the deluxe edition, it's the Uh, week before red dead. Okay. There we go. Important to know. Reiner, uh, Yoku's Island express. Yeah. This is a pinball platformer that you loved a lot. Yeah. To clarify, an open world Metroidvania pinball adventure, open world Metro 2d. Yes. Okay. Yep. 2D open world? Do we yeah, count that? Yeah, you can call it that. Okay, all right. Yeah, just add a dimension to it. Would you give this, what, an 8.5? 8.5, unique, uh, as the as the uh, genre implies, but uh, you don't jump in the world at all. Basically, you're a dung beetle with a right. petrified piece of crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're tethered to it by a little, maybe two-foot rope, and uh, your only means of locomotion is you could push it left or right, and then all jumping is handled with flippers in the environment. And <laughs> it's really because it's like this grassy environment, and there's a pinball flippers yeah, hiding in the bushes yeah. and stuff. And so, you know how pinball flippers work? Like you hit it at a certain point, it's going to launch at a certain angle. So that's how you navigate this space. And it's a really colorful, huge world uh, where you see a ramp, and you're like, okay, I want to hit it at ang- this angle to hit this ramp. But if you're a little later, maybe you'll veer off into a secret area you can't see that's like hidden in fog of war. Or you might launch up to some bumpers and that might launch you to a different area. So there's a lot of just strategy in planning out how you're maneuvering through this world. Like that's part of the fun is like pausing and looking at your map being like, if I hit this bumper and then bounce over to this flipper. If I hit the perfect shot, that's pretty. Cool. I can get over to this route. And then every once in a while in that, as you're just kind of exploring, going along, you'll run into areas where they lock you into what is essentially a pinball table. Now you're not scoring or anything like that. There's no tilt. Nothing fun. But there are missions on that table. So you do have to like complete certain things or boss fights uh, where you need to, you know, pick away at its health, figure out how to do that. I don't want to give away what they do with multiball because it's really Ooh, cool and, all right. and clever and different. Um, but it is a part of the game where there are balls all over the place. Uh, but lots of quests. Uh, you're leveling up gear, getting bigger wallet size to unlock different things. And it has all of those... Uh, the carrots that like a Metroid or Castlevania game has where you just want to keep seeing what's next. And then like you get a new power and you're like, Oh God, I can go all the way back there. There was something really cool back there. Yeah. I remember. And so you, you start backtracking a lot and it's like a new, new version. Spaces. It's like a new version of Metroid pinball. Uh, what Metroid it's, pinball it's, could have been. It's what it should have been. Yeah. Metroid, okay. Metroid pinball is a fine game, but this Very is fine. like, that was straight up pinball. This is like a whole new type of adventure. And if you like, Pinball or even the Metroidvania games. Yeah. Seriously, give this game a look. There we it go. Lots of fun. Yuku's Island Express on everything, right? PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC. Who Switch. made it? Who's the developer? Uh, it is uh, Villa Gorilla. And it's old Starbreeze guys. The guys that, huh. two of the guys oh, that weird. did The Darkness. Nice. So they went and like went from like the darkest thing possible to just this really vibrant and fun world and unique idea. Yeah, and Team Seventeen published it. Yeah, yeah. it's a weird one. Uh, yeah, you okay, gotta, you got to check it out real quick. Forgotten Anne. Yeah, this is uh, published by Square Enix Collective. Uh, they released the dud that was Fear Effect. Oh yeah, uh, recently. Uh, but this this game really came out of nowhere, and uh, I saw a lot of people just start tweeting about how cool it was. And the one thing that they kept saying is there's a lot of choice in this game. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. what does that mean? So I started investigating and I was like, okay, it's kind of like a Bioware game where you have a lot of uh, decisions in terms of conversations and dictating what happens next, right? So I started playing it. It's got like a very anime-esque look to it, but it plays kind of like Prince of Persia where it's side scrolling and very precise and jumping. And it's very clunky though. Like those Prince of Game Prince of Persia games of old. Yeah. Didn't control the best. This okay, is we're talking like that. Apple II. Prince yeah, Persia. yeah. Okay. So you gotta be exactly where you need to be, pixel perfect to reach ledges, pull yourself up, stuff like that. So that you can make a choice. But then you you come over and, and so you play as a human in a world called uh the Forgotten Realms, I believe, something like that. Dungeons uh, and Dragons. Okay, <laughs> or the Land go. of the Forgotten or something. And there are these So basically, you remember the old Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer animated classic. Unforgettable. There was the Land of Misfit Toys. Yeah. Uh, 
this is everything in life. Whether you had a pair of socks that you threw away, uh, an old chair that you gave away, all these items are in this land and they're alive. So they all live in this society together. What? Use socks, like a gun is like an enforcer ends up being like a police officer. So Anne, the main character, is like... A human. She's one of two humans in this world. And she's trying to figure out how to get out of here. Because her family the, abandoned her or something? Well, that's there's a lot to the uh, story. Uh, but okay. that's where the game begins, right? So you're, yeah. you're at that point. Uh, but you wield this power on your arm, this gem called the Arca, that can just strip the life away from these forgotlings. Uh, so you'll come in, come up to him and be like, okay, there's two people arguing. There's a dead forgotling here. I got to figure out who did this. And so you're, it's kind of like Bioware-esque in that uh-huh. you're having these interrogations. And at the end of it, you you get the choice of like, do you just walk away from it? Do you have the enforcer take care of one of them? Or do you just suck the life out of the one you think killed it? So at any point, at any forgotling in the game, most of the forgotlings in the game, you could just drain the life from them. And there'll be points where you'll be trapped in a room and you got to open up a door, but you need to power it with some energy. It turns out the life essence of a forgotling can be used as that energy. So you could be like, I don't know how to solve this puzzle. I'm just going to suck the life from this guy. I just had this huge conversation with and it seems really cool <laughs> to, uh, to p- open this door and move on. So there's a lot of those moments and they come back and haunt you later. Like they do a great job of kind of sewing all the narrative together, all these big choices and this there's sounds bizarre. two very distinct endings. It, it is really different, and uh, but quite powerful in, oh, in, okay. in its, its messaging and kind of how it plays out. It's very slow moving. That's the one thing I'll caution you if you like what you're hearing is there's a lot of conversations and the puzzles are pretty tedious and slow, but the story gets you. Okay. The, the moment to moment choices you have get you and it has a great ending. And one of the cool things they do once you beat the game you see the credits roll. Uh, if you look at the main menu, it says storylines. If you click that, it allows you to pick up right at that last choice. Oh, Detroit the style. The second of that last choice okay. and just play out the other side and oh, see how, how it would end. So you okay. can see both of them. Forgotten End. What'd you give that one? Uh, an eight. Really? Okay. So two great go. games that you've probably never heard of. Forgotten Anne and Yokos Island Express. Okay, you also played a game that I have heard of, but I was disgusted by the concept of uh, Jurassic World Live. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jurassic World Alive is... Alive, okay. Yes, it's it's a living, breathing thing. Uh-huh. Uh, it's Pokemon Go with dinosaurs. That's, 100%. Yeah, 100% that, and it's kind of cool. It, it, it's bare bones, just like Pokemon Go, where basically you're just... You open it up, you see your character standing on a map, which is Google Maps. Yeah. So you're in the real world, and there's just dinosaurs all over the place, and you click on it. You don't catch it. But what you do is you drain its DNA. You have a drone. <laughs> you have a is drone that's hovering game? over it. No. Okay. Uh, you have a drone that's hovering over it, and you're just kind of like shooting these. There's, it's kind of a game of precision where you got to like line up your shots and shoot these darts at the dinosaur to drain its DNA. So uh, however much you drain gives you a percentage of what that dinosaur is. Once you get 100% of that dinosaur, you can reconstruct it in your lab, add it to your collection. But since you're a terrible person you end up just battling that against other dinosaurs. That's the whole purpose of this. <laughs> oh, the so, dinosaurs deserve better than that, man. <laughs> Once you get four dinosaurs, you could go battle online, and you need four because it's team-based. There's only one. It's one-on-one in the battle, but like Pokemon, you can, like Pokemon games of old, you could swap out uh, the other ones that you're bringing along. So you, you could have a Stegosaurus out there, uh-huh. and it's going against a Triceratops, and you're like, oh, man, the Triceratops just stunned me. I'm going to pull him out and throw in my Velociraptor which can do a quick hit to take off some damage on Tricep. Quick There's attack. a lot of strategy. It's turn-based. Is it better combat than Pokemon it's Go? It's way just like... better combat. It's actually really? quite fun, and there is a lot of strategy in figuring out um, which dinosaurs pair against other ones, like, you know, like, kind of like chess or, or like um, uh, Final Fantasy Tactics a little bit, I would okay, say. Okay, so Jurassic World Alive is good <clears throat> as chess. Is that what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> okay. It's complicated, uh-huh, I would say. Uh-huh. But it, it uh, yeah, it's it seems like... It has all the chops of Pokemon Go where you get that kind of addictive quality of like, well, I want to get all of them. There's like a hundred. You see the checklist. It's like, well, where do I get them then? So those are the questions I have right now is like, are there like water ones next to water? Yeah. Uh, where do I find a T-Rex? Is that only at like, you know, certain locations in the in world? In Montana. Like, yeah, is it yeah. like separated? I wonder where like by the geography of where they're actually from in any way? no like, idea. kind of cool. But How you can level them up. Crash? Ooh, great question. It's more stable, but... 
that's a performance really, wise, don't trip over that low bar. I yeah, mean, come on. It, it hasn't crashed on me, but there are significant load times. Whenever you send out your drone to get a dyno, you're just like sitting there for 15 seconds. Plus, so that's if kind it of crashes and goes wrong, that's just part of the Jurassic Park lore. I mean, it <laughs> yeah. has to at some point all come crashing down. Defenses come down, yeah. Right, right. Jurassic World Alive. What a yeah. weird deal. Uh, well, there we go, guys. Uh, do you guys want to get the hell out of here so we can talk sure. about Pokemon? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Hey, Serial Vasquez, Kyle Hilliard. Hey. Serial Vasquez, you're Skyping in from beautiful Tokyo, right? That's right. Beautiful Tokyo hotel room. At at night. <laughs> time zone. What it's, time is it there for you right now? It is... It is one in the morning, basically. Okay. And that's the most interesting thing we have to talk about is I the time difference in the world. It is always yeah, fascinating. He's, he's staying later. up late. <laughs> he's staying up late to be on the podcast. What he's, a trooper. Absolutely. So that we can talk about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, which is very, very exciting. So you flew out to where, Serial? Give me the journey of your trip. Uh, we went to... It was similar to the, the path we took for the Dragon Ball cover story, where we went to Narita Airport, and then we went to took like a one-hour bus ride over to Tokyo. Um, but yeah, we went to Tokyo and we kind of were just here to watch this one press conference. Uh, and then we had, uh, a Q and a with, uh, Masuda. Um, they had, they had, after the press conference, they had this initial, uh, Q and a with multiple people on the team behind the press conference. Uh, and I think that was mostly Japanese press. We didn't ask any questions then. And then we were led to another room where we talked to Masuda uh, with like a small group of American press. Okay, stop. I feel like we're missing the baseline. You went to Creatures, the, the developer? We uh, we are going there tomorrow. Oh, but... really? Oh, fascinating. Okay. So then today you were just in some generic place for this press conference. Yeah, we, we, we went to a very fancy uh, live conference area where there were just rows of what I imagine are Pokemon Company employees all standing at attention. Like no one was leaning <laughs> on the walls or anything. It was very, very uh, formal. Bunch they, of nurse uh, Jennies out there. Yeah, They take it very seriously over there. Yeah, everyone like everyone was in a suit. So. Okay, give me the biggest impression. What was the vibe of the room? Was it like, hey, we're trying something weird? Or was it like, hey, everybody, kind of sort of Pokemon RPG on Switch? Yeah, everyone seems... Everyone seemed... Very convinced that this was like some sea change. Everyone was very excited about sort of revealing this new thing. It seemed very like it didn't seem like they were holding back in terms of like, I don't know, like maybe don't get your hopes up. Like it (laughs) seemed like they they wanted to. They were very they were very adamant about sort of the impact this might have. Yeah. Okay, Kyle, what the hell did they announce? Let's get to it here. So let's go Pikachu, let's go Eevee, which is, it kind of bridges the gap between Pokemon Go and like a Pokemon console game. And it's also a little bit of a remake of Yellow, but it's simplified in a way, focused towards younger kids. That's exactly it. Okay, what I want to know, can I pop a champagne bottle? Is this the Pokemon RPG on Switch that I want it to be? Because watching that trailer... I'm feeling really good about it. And they say it's like, oh, it's your first journey, your first adventure. You can play it with one hand. But everything in that trailer looks pretty damn good to me. It, can I be excited? No. Yeah, you can't, <laughs> I'll, no I'll yes, you it. can, of course. Uh, okay, Serial, are you excited? This, is, this, is, this to me feels like the Pokemon RPG that they are setting up as sort of the bridge between like, hey, I, I've heard about Pokemon. I played Pokemon Go and they kind of fell off of it. Uh, but I, I, I remember that Pokemon was cool. So then this, I think this game is for that person of just like, oh yeah, this is sort of like a, a very simple RPG that I can get into. That sort of reminds me of those old games that I used to play when I was young. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to channel the listeners right there and the viewers out there that might be in this camp. Maybe it's just cause I'm in this camp, but love, love the Pokemon RPG games, especially red and blue Pokemon go. It was novel for a little while. I now think I actively dislike the concept of Pokemon Go, (laughs) which is frustrating to me, by the way, but we can get into that. How many years has it been out? No battling and no trading. That's just deal over. I'm not playing that crap again. This has battling and trading. (laughs) That's exactly it. So it's basically, yeah. What I want to know is like, what is Pokemon Go about it? And should that scare off the RPG fans if they're not won over by Pokemon Go? I I think the the most major difference that I think a lot of mainline RPG players for the Pokemon series are going to, notice is the way catching works so it's basically identical to pokemon go in that it is more involved there it's less about there aren't battles with wild pokemon instead it just goes to the pokemon go capture screen but there are trainer battles so you do fight other trainers that's really bizarre and we should point out this is all in kanto and so in theory they said they recreated that entire world yeah they they talked about how it it will be the kanto landmass but like it'll it, you'll see things that are reminiscent of like, hey, I, 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 you'll recognize parts of it. 
but it'll like they obviously said that hey it'll be very different in terms of like you know pixel it's not like a pixel per pixel recreation Okay. But it, it seems like they are trying to channel that spirit of, of Pokemon, you know, red and blue and yellow. Yeah, and even in one of the early leaks uh, before this game was announced, and it seemed to be 100%, 100% spot on now, they talked about, like, HMs uh, are still, like, Pokemon moves. You can ride Pokemon around. Uh, oh, wait, I, are HMs in the game, Serial? They, they are not. So there are no HMs. So I think it'll be very similar to uh, Sun and Moon in that basically you used, like, different Pokemon to... Right. Uh, or maybe they, they could just remove that stuff entirely. Just like, hey, no blockades if you want to go somewhere. We'll either time gate it or you just go wherever. Uh, the leak point. said it was like Sun and Moon, so I'll trust that since it was right about absolutely everything else. And also the leak said that you will encounter red and blue in the storyline somewhere yeah. in this game, which is really interesting. Did right. they talk about that at all or like where the story's set? Uh, they, didn't, they didn't say anything other than uh, it'll be later in the... That it, it's not going to be a recreation of the story of red and blue. Uh, and that it won't take you to Johto at all. So there's not going to be like the whole, you know, back half of gold and silver. Which well, they got to say I that. I like that a lot, yeah. yeah maybe maybe that's my favorite thing about it. Yeah, Let's Go Don fan, I think is going to be coming out later. And everybody <laughs> can really look forward to that one. I mean, I think I think it is worth noting, I don't know if we made this clear up front, that, that uh, this is like a simplified, different version of the Pokemon RPG that they teased at E3. They were very explicit about yes, that. Yes, yeah. This point. is like a, a like a younger audience focus, new to Pokemon. Like, it's going to be a simplified version of it. And that RPG that they teased at E3, they announced, well, I guess announced in quotes. They kind of just had it in the press release. Said it's coming late 2019 now. So that is the Game Freak next generation RPG for the Switch. Yes. What I want to know but is... But Game Freak did develop this one. I thought Creatures made this. No, uh, it's Game no. Freak, right, Serial? They're, they're helping. Yeah, they're helping with this, but this is this is Game Freak. Yeah. This Are you is, kidding Masuda me? No. is on this. Oh, really? I know that because I know that Pokemon Quest, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I know that was all Game Freak, but that's interesting because the look of Pokemon Let's Go P- uh, Pikachu and Eevee, I think it has a great look, and it looks very Detective Pikachu. I, did, I like the way it looks a lot. I yeah. think it looks really cool. But it looks like yeah. those Detective Pikachu models, which Creatures was developing. See, I thought right. it looked more uh, like the I, Go models. Yeah, I, mm. I think it looks like up-res Pokemon Go models at this point. Yeah. Like the, the Pidgey that I saw was like recognizably the Pidgey in Pokemon Go. Okay. Well, that now it makes me wonder even more. I mean, this is what the new game is probably going to look like. Maybe some animation tweaks. Obviously, the art completely different in terms of the setting and the you know geography. But in theory, the Pokemon real RPG coming next year, it's going to look like this, right? I think it'll be less chibi. If that, if I don't know if they, I don't know if you could even describe this as being that kind of chibi cute. Look. I think it's 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 fairly chi- like chibi-ish, and like your main character is very like very exaggerated uh, portions in a way that I don't think like mainline Pokemon games are. Because uh, so serial, they think, like they said specifically that the 2019 one is is going to be more like X Y Sun and Moon, and those and those designs right, are like, getting more more realistic. Wait, what do you mean? What do they say specifically? So basically, they said that uh, this is sort of like them looking at the Switch as a console uh, in terms of like the, from what we saw, it didn't seem like the handheld mode was the way to play this game just because you will have to use the gyro sensor to aim when you're trying to catch Pokemon. Right. Um, and they view sort of the the 2019 games as their, them looking at the at the Switch as a portable and continuing the 3DS basically lineage with those that games. has me worried this, about is that like graphical fidelity at all or what exactly does that mean because in this game you can still like trade and battle online and stuff right in in the let's go pikachu yeah that was one of the more unclear things because they they mentioned that uh they won't be using nintendo's online service but in a q a they they did go back and say like yeah you'll be able to trade and battle you know through local play and through wi-fi which is basically what nintendo always says when they mean online yeah uh so it, you will be you will have that online infrastructure, I believe. But uh, yeah, it, it it seems weird from uh, from that standpoint. Okay, what I'm still trying to figure out is what's watered down here. So you can't fight Pokemon in the wild, which seems like a real bummer. So at that point, then it's like, well, you can't really grind, you can't really train. You can still battle sure. trainers and probably level up. I saw you can select moves and stuff. Like that's that seems good. But what else yeah, do you think is going to be watered down? What's going to disappoint fans? Is what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, there's you, there's no random battles in grass. You'll see the the Pokemon walking around in the grass. Um, they're not. They haven't finalized how experience works. So <laughs> there's a chance that that whenever you catch a Pokemon, you'll gain experience for your entire party, or it could just be whatever Pokemon you have selected, and then you'll also gain experience from you know Pokemon battles. Um, 
They also mentioned that there's you can't evolve uh, your starter Pokemon, so you'll be stuck with uh, you can you can send Eevee or Pikachu out of your party, um, okay. but you 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 can't evolve that specific Pokemon, but you can catch you know more other Pikachu's or Eevees and evolve those instead. That's really wild. So it is strangely Pokemon Yellow in that way, which is a fun reference point for this entire project. Uh, okay, so you can also I saw in the trailer that you can have like other Pokemon follow you around. So you can catch in theory 151 and have them follow you around. Uh, so all all the footage you saw only had one Pokemon following you around, so it's it's hard to know how like how long that conga line goes. Well, no, no, I just but mean of all the different like, options. Like I can have oh, a Mewtwo okay. walking around behind yeah, me if I want. Yes, and then if they're large enough, like in the trailer, there was an Onix. Uh, you you'll ride them, and then Pikachu will also be riding on your back. That's so cute. Well, I Kyle, are you excited for this? I I am, but I do think it's going to be more of a a spinoff. Then I think we're, we're But if realizing. the spinoff is an RPG, even if it's a simplified yeah. one that recreates all of Kanto with all 100, like original 151, that's a good game. Yes, I, I'm excited for this, but it, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be really simple. I think it's going to be kid focused, which isn't a bad thing. But what does simple mean? That's what I'm still trying to figure uh, just out. Less statistics, less reading, less like management. You're just fewer items. You're probably just catching Pokemon yeah. and you're sort of building your team. And that's, I think that's the most fun part of it is like right. you're building a team and it's based and it's going to be based in this familiar Pokemon world that you played in, in yellow specifically. Right. right. Um, but yeah. I, I don't, I don't think it's going to feel like a core Pokemon RPG. It's going to right, feel more like, like it than, you know, Gale of Darkness or any of that sense, you know? Well, right. I, I, I don't think know. It is more of a, of a Pokemon game than that. But like, I think that one of the other questions we asked during the, the Q and a was, uh, they're not going to f- emphasize sort of IVs and stats and sort of like all the sort of under the hood stuff that has kind of come to define sort of, you know, high level Pokemon play over the years. I think they're going to move shift away from that and sort of simplify it. And I think this ends up being the Pokemon RPG that Pokemon Go fans want. And yeah. they like, oh, you know, I like Pokemon Go. I like, you know, seeing all those creatures again. But this, there's not much to this game. I wish I could just play a game like the ones I remember. And I think this is that game for them. Yeah. yeah to but a I wild- don't think that necessarily... Yeah, I don't think this necessarily like means that hardcore Pokemon games aren't going to like it. I just think that if you've been playing the games all along, this isn't going to feel like one of those to you. Sure. Man. and like, we- I just don't think it's going to be like, oh man, Pokemon on Switch, finally. It's not going to be that game. It's going to be... I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. I like the way it looks. Me and Serial both, we still play a lot of Pokemon Go. I like that communication yeah. between the two games. So I, I'm looking forward to it. But it's, I don't think it's going to be the sort of revelation of, of Pokemon on a console that we're I think it's for. a huge leap forward. I think it's going to scratch a big itch for yeah, at least yeah. a year before the big new thing comes out. But there's a twisted part of me where I'm such a nostalgia hound with Pokemon that like kind of ex- more excited for this maybe than yeah. like a new generation of new freaks, especially I mean, if graphically it looks the same. It's very focused on the original group yeah. you know, of 150, which I, a, quick, a quick aside, Serial, that you uh, tweeted, which I thought was really funny, is the fact that you can ride any Pokemon that's a certain size. Apparently they said that yeah. they toyed with the idea of being able to ride any Pokemon, <laughs> which I really love that, that, yeah. that, that they and then sat they there. It, yeah. yeah, like rubbed their chins going like, hmm, what if you could ride Pikachu around. Just like a little <laughs> Dratini between your yeah, legs. That'd be amazing. <laughs> so uh, stupid. I think they made a mistake there. Yeah. I would have loved to see Other that. interesting things, uh, co-op. You can run around, catch a Pokemon with another person, which is very confusing exactly how that works and whatnot. <laughs> also, they're releasing a Pokeball Joy-Con. Help me with this, Serial. So it's the, the Pokeball Plus, which is basically the sequel to uh, the Pokemon Go Plus. Okay. So this will work basically like, one, like that in Go, but in... Um, in Let's Go, it'll function as basically a Joy-Con uh, in that you'll use it. You'll use it to catch Pokemon and, and you know interface with the game for the most part. I think they said that it'll completely replace it and that you can play the game with just a Joy-Con. So you may be able to just play the entire game with that Pokeball. That's um, so weird. Does it have a joystick on it? You did get to hold it, right? I don't know. Like no, I wasn't able. They they would they would not let us hold it. So it's hard okay. to know if that is going to be a joystick. In the thing, in the video, it certainly looks like it. Like Does the Pokeball okay. button yeah. looks like a joystick. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the other thing is that you, it's sort of like, it has Poke Walker functionality a little bit because yeah. you can put a Pokemon in the Pokeball and then walk around with it in real life. And you know, they'll, they'll give you bonuses based on that. Like what those are, it's hard to know. Um, and, and they, they said you can feel say, the Pokemon inside of it, which I, I, right, I thought so it like, was going to be like HD rumble, but I don't think, I don't know if that thing has HD rumble or not, but I guess yeah, you can they, feel they talk- Eevee walking around in there. Is it true? Can you feel Eevee walking <laughs> around in there, Serial? They said they, they are incorporating Rumble into it. So like they, they talked a little bit about how they want it. They, they want sort of the action of, you know, 
pretending to throw a pokeball to feel good mm. uh, as you're throwing it and that they work very hard on it. So uh, Eevee so... will be jostling around. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> boink, boink, yeah. boink, boink. I was, yeah, I think it'd be funny if that's what you had to do to catch the Pokemon instead of just clicking the button. So there are you know, people walking around just kind of like doing this action every <laughs> few feet as they're walking around. Uh, well, here's the crucial question. Can I put some sort of elastic strap onto it so that when I catch Pokemon while playing the game, I can actually chuck the ball and then it'll come back There's... to me like a fun yo-yo? Uh, you might be like okay, it, okay. it comes with a, it comes with a wrist strap and it also comes with like a ring that I think you can put on your uh, on your finger to prevent it from even sliding out of your hand. Uh, so I mean, if you want to modify, <laughs> what fun! It, <laughs> <laughs> this is so strange. It's so crazy to think about Pokemon, like the Pokemon Company, Game Freak, apparently a little bit, but I'm skeptical of how involved they are. I bet they're like offering support and maybe a couple things here and there, but I hope to God they're mainly focusing on the new game. But anyways, it's fascinating to think of like Pokemon Company and Game Freak and creatures wrapping back around and adapting to Pokemon Go in such a strange way. And obviously it's a phenomenon. It's still ranking in uh, Buco Dolores, as the money, they say. I think yeah, what it is. yeah, absolutely. But to think that all came from an April Fool's Day joke with Google. <laughs> and now because of that weird joke, now it has forever shaped the first console rpg for pokemon it's insane it's weird it's a weird world surreal and you're you're seeing it firsthand man yeah it, it's also like i i was I, I was not expecting these games to be out this year but it seems like yeah they they very quickly saw pokemon go and said like we should just we need to make a game based around this before this thing you know either dies out or yeah you know, frankly guys i think they're all in it for the money <laughs> <laughs> I, I think i mean i think it's the right call like i'm glad i i'm i'm thankful for them to, that they said like by the way the the sort of you know hardcore rpg that's still in the way but i think it is absolutely the right call to capitalize on pokemon go's popularity and wrap it into the larger game and not with a cheap cash at least from the trailer it looks like a couple notches above yeah. just slamming pokemon go on switch i think so yeah yeah, yeah. uh okay they let's, also could have just said like hey let's make the, the the next core rpg basically like pokemon go so i think like the the fears of like oh pokemon go is going to make these games worse i think is a little, little bit assuaged by like Hey, we have this. Uh, we have this thing for Pokemon Go players, but we also have, yeah. you know, the next. Uh, it that, just made you know, this one Pokemon. worse. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What <laughs> yeah, about yeah. what about the the less interesting <laughs> option here, which is Pokemon Quest, a game that's free to play, released on Switch now. Kyle, do you say it's coming to mobile yeah. soon? Yeah, iOS and Android. I think within like two months yeah. or something. Okay, that makes a lot of sense because yeah. I played this a little End bit last June. night, and it's just it just feels fully like a port of a crappy free to play <laughs> iOS it game. Does, yeah. yeah. The fact that you it's have a, a li- cursor think, on screen. Yeah. Yeah. You you don't even like. You basically have to use the touchscreen because if you want to use the controller, you have to drag a little, you know, magic hand around the entire screen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's no there's no cross compatibility between the the versions, so any progress you make in this in the Switch version won't transfer over to the iOS or version whenever it comes out. So I'm kind of I play I've played some of it, but it feels like I feel like to give this game a fair shake, you kind of have to play it on iOS because it feels like a hundred percent built for it. Yeah, but it's interesting they would yeah, bring right it now, to Switch. But yeah, overall, it takes like Pokemon. You go to a new island called Tumblecore, some nonsense like that, uh, and then you. It all looks like Crossy Road characters. It's like they take the Crossy Road aesthetic and boil every Pokemon down to it, and then it's basically just a super simplified action RPG like Mystery Dungeon for big Whoa. old iPhone babies. Even that's like. Uh, too much of a comparison. Oh, very like, much like, so. Uh, the fact that you can, I, I was kind of amazed, like, you can just make, because it, it, it goes on its own anyway. You send your EV out or whatever into the world and it fights on its own. And you can, like, you know, there's cooldown attacks that you can do. But you can, there's right. even a, a checkbox where you can just auto that. And the so, comments is just so boring that I just ended up doing yeah, that. You just quickly. turn it on and watch Eevee, like yeah. Cube Eevee fight Cube Rattata, and you're like, I did think it was kind of cool. I took Bulbasaur and Petal Dance, like when it flew around, it actually chopped down some of the trees around it. Okay. So it's like, okay, there's the most interesting thing about yeah. the game. But overall, it's just a swarm of menus and iOS free to play trappings. And it's just, yeah. it's, I think it's uh, everything that sucks about Pokemon <laughs> <laughs> in one package. <laughs> I like the way it looks. I, yeah. Even Charizard is a cube is that's hideous. I, I think that my ideal version of this is that this game is basically just a vehicle for them to sell new toys under that art style because I really do right. like that art style. Just like here's here's Electrode but square, <laughs> like instead of instead of a sphere. Finally, uh, they're like listening that's, that's, to fans. I mean, right. in Tokyo, they already had like plushes available for you guys to like play with and photograph, right? Yeah, like it's, based it's on those designs. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was just square Voltorb. <laughs> and I just like an idiot. I was kind of like, ah, oh, that's kind of cool. It's like a square now. Oh boy, guys. 
And you're critical of Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go I'm mad. I'm going to play right. the hell out of that game with my kid. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to play it as an adult man. Good for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still not sure how I'll play it. We'll see. <laughs> Serial, uh, you're the best. Uh, are you having a good time in Tokyo overall? Yeah, it's been pretty cool so far. Yeah? What's good the highlight? I what, recommend it. <laughs> yeah, it is probably the best place on earth. What's been like the cultural highlight so far? A good, juicy Japan story? Like, have you gotten lost? Has anyone helped you? Anything good like that? Uh, not, I haven't had like a crazy story yet. It's mostly been like going to a lot of really cool restaurants and just sort of seeing all those minor decisions, like being reminded of all the minor decisions that like in the hotel and like just, you know, crossroads of just like, they've made the better decision than America. Of just, like, this works <laughs> a lot better. I don't know why we don't do this. And I think the answer is because we don't trust ourselves. <laughs> we can't have nice things. Japan gets nice things because they trust themselves and they don't break that trust. Well, exactly. Don't break the trust. It's just when a culture is just the, the North star is being polite and also humble. Like you can have an amazing society because no one's going to mess with it in any way. Right. Yeah. And you can just trust everybody with everything. Cause everyone's like, Oh, I couldn't possibly break this. I'm not worthy of breaking this. Serial, yeah. I deem you worthy of breaking stuff. Go out there and paint the Fine. town red, That's man. That's right. Okay. Make a good impression on, on the Japanese. <laughs> Just <laughs> like once. our buddies over there on For YouTube. Uh, okay, Serial, <laughs> do you want to give a clap and get out of here, buddy? All right. Bye. Do I do this? Or? No, just yourself. Okay. All right. Brian Shea, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Good to have you. And this is Brian Shea from Albuquerque. He's actually Skyping in from Albuquerque, so Albuquerque. please enjoy that. Uh, you went to... A Nintendo event or Nintendo's headquarters? I Where'd went you to go? Nintendo of America's headquarters in Redmond, Washington. Ah, Ooh. beautiful. Uh, yes, scenic Redmond, Washington. Trees. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I was playing some Mario Tennis Aces and Splatoon 2's Octo Expansion. Okay, now help me out. Mario Tennis Aces, that had a demo recently, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's hitting like right now, actually. It's oh, a right? multiplayer demo that you can play uh, this weekend. It's, and like a, it's like a tournament or something. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird how they're billing it. But I think yeah, if you, you can play, play at all, you get like Mario's classic outfit when the full game launches in June. About time we get to see him in that classic Finally. outfit. Finally. So, but you get to play something different. I played Adventure Mode. So this the is the interesting player, campaign. Single player thing. campaign, yeah. Okay, how was that? So it was fun. Like it starts off with like the typical tutorial stuff, uh, learn all the different shots and special moves and everything. But then like once I got into like the actual matches, like I was playing against uh, Donkey Kong in one match and like there were piranha plants all lining the net. And like if you hit it into the piranha plant, they would spit back at you instead of like going to the other side of the court. There's another one where you're hitting the ball back against like all this wall of piranha plants or like shooting, like they shoot different speed speeds of uh, balls at you. You have to hit that's it back cute. at them and knock them out. Like you have a time limit and like you have to hit like 30 of them or something like that. And that's just the tutorial? No, this is like the first world. So the story is you're in the Basque Kingdom, which is a new kingdom you've the never Basque? asked. The Basque? Basque. Can you spell and it for me? B-A-S-K. Like basking in the sun? I guess. Uh, and it's, it was destroyed huh. by a legendary racket, which is basically the Infinity Gauntlet because it has like five stones that are scattered throughout the world now that you have to go and really? collect. Yeah. Wow. So okay. Luigi has uncovered this racket and it has taken control of him, Wario, and Waluigi. And you are Mario setting out to rescue him. And like this is compelling. Do you get to see a cutscene of Luigi? Like I don't know what's happening to me. Actually, yes. If you watch the trailer, there's <laughs> an adventure trailer funny. where he's like picking it up, and like this purple and black like cloud is just surrounding him. This is scary. It's pretty badass. Okay, so then the actual world, it looks like kind of a Mario Party type map or something? It's like a hub, like, so, you know, it's just, it looks like a new Super Mario Brothers hub or like okay. Super Mario 3D World. Oh, you're walking on a trail, right? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Not um, like 3D land or whatever. Yeah, not like 3D World, 3D I guess, world but yeah, like, it, there's a trail and you just choose, you want to go right or left mm -hmm. or whatever. And it's just a series of little missions. Yeah, and so like there's, but you can level up Mario, like you only play as Mario in the adventure. Uh, you level Mario up, so like, yeah, it's like, uh, hit speed run speed and agility uh and then like you get experience for completing all the missions and you can also get extra rackets so like that has like three attributes as well one of them is durability so if your racket actually breaks in the middle of a match you lose automatically are so, you kidding yeah. me but you can only get damage on rackets when your opponent does a special shot and like if you don't return it properly like, you have to time your return properly and like if it's a zone shot which is like just you're using energy in an energy gauge 
it will uh, you have like three three uh, damage points you can take if you don't time your return properly. Okay, so it's a risk reward. Yeah. Do I want to try to get this crazy shot? Or you just if let I mess it, it up, yeah. my racket breaks. And then there's the oh, special. Breath of the shot. Wild fans are gonna hate that. By the way, <laughs> special. Army shot. haters will hate that. <laughs> So special shots when your energy gauge is full, you go into like this little cutscene, sh- jump up, and like each time you do a zone shot or a special shot, you actually enter like into first person mode. Like you can control where you want to aim it. Uh-huh. So like at first I was aiming it like completely on the opposite side of the court, but then I was like, oh wait, I could damage this guy's racket, so I just aim it right at his head. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually did hit Luigi, or not Luigi, uh, some, it was Chain Chomp, actually. I hit Chain Chomp right in his face. Dodge this. Yeah. It is crazy how much more compelling this is than the Wii U. Oh, yeah, 100%. You reviewed the Wii U version, yeah, right? it was awful. There was, it was just like multiplayer done. Like, yeah. that was it. I, it, it was so bad. It seems like maybe they knew the Switch was happening, like, <laughs> and they were just like, oh, let's just, we'll make this way better in a couple there years. There was no let's reason to come back out. in that God, game. That game was awful. Ultra Smash. Yeah, uh, and then the boss battle was against Petey Piranha, who all you had to do was pretty much just return the balls, and it would get his stamina meter down, and then he would fall over, and his belly button would stick out, mm. and you have to do a smash right onto his belly. This button. This sounds good. Uh, should we be yeah, ex- into it. excited about this? Thing? I think so. I think it, the adventure mode sounds like a really good way to get you to like engage with the game in like weird, zany ways, like all kinds of mini games, boss battles, like weird twists on typical tennis. Are there motion control options? Uh, I don't. Think so. They must I think they would have made me play that if yeah, if I they usually uh, do that. In yeah. they, they, they tried yeah. to get me to do the motion controls with Splatoon 2 Octo expansion, which they were taken aback when I said, "Can we turn the motion controls off?" <laughs> they did not. They were like, "Really?" <laughs> uh, I can't wait to of... play all these with the Pokeball accessory. By the way, that's going to be very fun. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Splatoon 2. What is this? This is like that that weird expansion where the yeah. trailer was like it was like Kelly a... or Mari walking through the subway or whatever. Yeah, hip hop so, references. Yeah, a lot of hip hop references. So I did not see any hip-hop references i saw a lot of uh, 80s music references uh like i think there was one of the uh levels i played was like right round station or okay. something like that and the, uh, he said that a lot of music references are in like the stage names but this is basically just like a really hard splatoon campaign and they actually had so you're in like a test facility and you're going from like test chamber to test chamber completing these activities you like that guy yes. and go on you're gonna really like this one kyle because i sure liked it Breath of the Wild shrine designers came over and helped out with the creation of this oh, expansion. The, really? Does that does that go into visuals or just like mechanics? just like the the mechanics of how the game works? Like, okay. Like there was one where I was rolling the ball down. Like I have to, some physics giant, stuff. Yeah, giant eight ball. You have to roll it down this path while other enemies are trying to blast it off, and you have to get it to like the target. But like you you're hitting different levers to get it to raise up and go to a higher more higher path. Yeah, it's a okay. lot more puzzly. I'm super than, into that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I know how much you love puzzles, Hanson. Yeah, they don't have any constellations in there anywhere. <laughs> do I don't see any constellations. Okay, thank God. Then I think I can pass these just fine. But yeah, there were some really tough challenges. Like there was one where like. They were like, all right, choose your weapon. And he's like, I'd recommend the slosher. It was like either the slosher, which is like the bucket that you splash mm. ink or like the ink roller. Yeah. And it's like, all right, you have to choose a close range weapon. And uh, I was like, all right, I guess I'll choose the slosher. And I go out there and it's just a flat area with a bunch of enemies. He's like, just destroy the enemies. And I'm like, this is kind of uncre- or unimaginative. And you said it to Nintendo's face. I, I thought it in my head. It was an internal monologue. Okay. <laughs> And it's a short uh, monologue. It was a very short monologue. <laughs> <laughs> but I ran out there and I, I threw the first thing. And then I realized that all of the ground was the boxes, like destructible boxes. So you have to be real careful about where you're throwing oh, your okay. ink because ah. the boxes start breaking. And like the enemies are shooting, so they're breaking boxes as well. And then uh, the hardest one was definitely like this carousel. Like there's switches on either side of this platform that you're on. You shoot the switch and this giant like carousel just starts rotating in front of you and there's like 22 enemies on it and they're all shooting at you while they're rotating back and forth so you're not only trying to take them out in a time limit but you're also trying to not be killed by them and also uh manage like what part of the carousel is facing you so the coolest single player content you've seen from splatoon one or two i am a huge fan of both campaigns of the base games i would say this is looking like it could definitely be the the best single player content okay it just looks wild more bold yeah they're really going for it and And this is this is paid right uh yes i'm not sure how much it is or when is it coming out uh i don't think they've given an announce or a release date i think it's supposed to be summer Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm with you, Che, where I'm one of those weirdos that actually ended up playing more probably single player than even multiplayer, like, I, which is a rare Splatoon player. So I, I, and the fact that this is more puzzly is very exciting for me. Mm-hmm. That sounds yeah. cool. And if you like multiplayer, they give you unlocks for just playing through the single player. Like, hmm. uh, you get like 
10 plus items like gear to equip to your guy and also you unlock the octoling to play uh instead of an inkling in multiplayer, which is oh, kind of cool. that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Shay, while you're down here, I've been meaning to ask you, as our Sonic expert, what do you think of this Team Sonic Racing announcement today? I mean, the Sonic and All-Stars games are really fun, so... But what if you strip out all the fun Sega cameos from that? I think it's still a completely solid kart racer that uh, is almost as good as Mario Kart. Okay. I, it, people, whenever they, people talk about Sonic and they're like, oh, Sonic sucks, it, there's always like that little asterisk where they're like, well, I, I did like the, the racing. It's true. I did play yeah. that. They, they were surprisingly good. For it sure. is super it strange fun. that like Sonic is supposed to be like this super fast character, but they're putting him in a car to race. Like, <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And also yeah. like he's buddies with Paul Rudd now or something I saw on GameInformer.com. <laughs> Finally. What is it? So there's rumors that Paul Rudd's going to be the cop that Sonic's buddy yeah, so, in the upcoming live action movie. Which that live, yeah. I think like Deadpool's director is still producing is that right i don't know it's there's been so many weird things flying around i don't know what to believe (laughs) and there's a lot of like people like people in comedy like that that we like that are apparently attached to like help write that script it's very it's a very weird movie really yeah like that that podcast (laughs) the doughboys yeah like one of those guys is apparently writing it is this thing going to be trippy and weird? Could they pull this off? Life work? Mm. I don't know. It could be funny. Look, even as a big Sonic fan, I am extremely skeptical about this movie, but I don't know. Maybe they can do it. I will say, the Sonic Boom animated show? It's pretty, pretty fun. Funny. I've watched a few it's episodes. Funny. And it's also like extremely self-referential. So yes. was oh, that yeah. kind of like deflating all wind out of the sails of the Sonic movie? Or in the Sonic movie, can they still be like, remember that time I smooched a woman? Whoa. And like make all those dumb references. And to like, Paul Rudd well, just goes, no, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> remember all the <laughs> porn on the Rudd. internet, Paul? <laughs> yes, Paul will say. I do remember that. <laughs> Bright future for Sonic out there, fans. Really look forward to it. Uh, do you guys want to move on to emails? Let's Love do it. it. And welcome back to the Game Informer Show. I'm still here. We now have Andrew Reiner back, Kyle Hilliard back, hey. and on the podcast for the first time ever, I believe, Andy McNamara. It's not the first time <laughs> ever. He it's hosted the podcast. That's true. It's been a while, though, man. It has really been months. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Have you been busy? I've been, I've been busy. What have you been doing? I've Buying been... new hats. <laughs> uh, I, well, I mean... Other than, you know, we this year has been super busy because uh, we had, you know, issue 300 and the party and all that stuff. And at the same time, last year, we started working on um, the website, though it has been something that I have been working on myself for probably five or six years as far as putting together various plans, yeah. trying to change the website. So this is something I've been working on forever, but we really started like real work last year. August or September on building a new website for Game Informer. Okay, that is the big announcement. That is new the big website. Yes. It, this isn't a redesign. No, no. Uh, we, we, you know, we tried to see what we could do um, to keep the technology we had. But I mean, the reason why I've been working on this for five years is that essentially when we made the choice seven years ago, mistakes were made. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Over ambitious or what was the... Some In some degree, yes. Okay. You know what I mean? And, and just like um, it... The technology, you know, at the time, I, I mean, I asked a lot of questions. People were like, this will not become a problem. And a, an issue, a core issue of the site became a problem almost immediately. Uh-huh. Right. And that was just like, you know, I, I don't think even the, the companies we worked with to put it together understood how many posts and how much content Game Informer puts up in a day. Uh, and it just kept kind of bloating and became harder and harder to control. And it really became something that um, over time, we were never like, hey, let's add new things to the website. We were just like, putting our fingers in the holes in the dam and, and, and praying that the dam didn't break. And we have been doing that for a long, long time. I mean, there's, it's funny. I mean, it's just a simple like kind of example. I wrote a letter. that was like an introduction letter to like, Hey, this is our new website on the current website we have now. Yeah. It's gone. I don't know where it is. It's not on the website. It's not on the internet. It's like literally gone. <laughs> we have content on our current website that just disappears. It really does. It's it scary. It really does. And, and, and I don't know why, We've looked into it. We've tried to find it again and it's gone. So I couldn't even like, I couldn't even write a letter that was like, hey, when we launched this website X and X day ago, I don't know when we launched the current <laughs> website because that story is gone. It's always been launched, Andy. Right, right. You know, like I have no idea. I mean, I can well, go to the very, very first, like very first post, but I don't even know if that's right. I did put an alternate dimension in the back end of our website. Oh, so I was wondering if it was taking so long to upload. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to click yeah. that button. Yeah. Don't go to the other dimension. Yeah, it <laughs> oh, does. It, it, it lives in three different realms. So it has lots of problems. And then, you know, we, we really, at the time, 
technology's changed a lot as far as the way that you can build a website now versus the way you could build one then. And so we were trapped by a lot of technology issues. And the site is super slow. And I, by the way, our readers have been amazing. I put a post up and they were like, I like the site the way it is. And I'm like, that is so nice of you because... <laughs> I, truly, I'm like, you guys are such great fans because our site sucks. It's like, I, I can't believe you don't realize how slow it is. And I've even talked to friends and I was like, I was like, hey, you know, I've been working on changing the site. They're like, why would you change the site? And I was like, am I the only one that sees this stuff? <laughs> uh, and maybe I am, but like, it's it's really no, slow not. to react. The comments are like, the comment threads are hard to follow. I've even just been using it the last couple of days again for, and it's been a while. Like it's it's just hard and it makes communication tough between our community. Mobile. Mobile. We're not mobile friendly, which basically, I mean, to give you guys a hint, it throws us off SEO, which is like uh, search engine results and optimization. And like um, we we have a hard time fixing it because of this kind of dated technology. So I need to get, I need to change the technology, find a solution that'll change the technology. Worked a long time doing that, you know what I mean? And the team here, we've been trying to find solutions to change the way we just work as a whole so we can do things quicker, faster, innovate, yeah. right? You know what I mean? So we're not stuck where we are because we know the internet's always changing and things are better. But also at the same time too, like we wanted to lean into the things that I don't think the current site does, which was to try to make a site that felt more, to some degree, like the magazine. I wanted it to be cleaner. I wanted it to be kind of easier to navigate, Um and, and kind of make it easier to read. I mean, there's a lot of things like, I think the site right now is difficult to read. I'm not, by the way, I'm not here to just rip on our current site, but <laughs> I, I, I may do that a bit. I mean, I've, uh-huh. I've, I've been trying to, I've been trying to kill it for a long time. Um, and we've well, uh, seen him at the servers just yanking <laughs> yeah. out cables. We had to pull him back. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I, I'm super excited about what we have. I, I, you know, I showed it to the team around here and they're excited to be able to like, to get to post on it. It's just so much easier. And, and I, I know people are like, well, I don't care because yeah. you're getting rid of user b- blogs, which is the current plan, but nothing is final. It's just the current plan um, was like, hey, we need to figure out what we can do to go as what I kind of call like a fresh start, right? And we got to a point where we said, this is enough to get to the fresh start like things like lights off has been one that people have requested, right? Yeah, I know that's on there. And that's it was always on our list. It's just way down the list, and now I need to move it up the list. <laughs> um, but um, you know, just like what could we do to get the site out there functioning, doing content? But what changes, and I don't think people realize, is that if if it takes Kyle three hours to write a post, that's and then that post disappears. <laughs> and then, then that post disappears. I, you know, like, it's it's kind of like, he, he, we could do more, right? And we could, like, people are like, we want more shows or we want more this. And, like, if we had more time, which the website is literally stealing our time here at the office. And, I, you know, I don't want to kill our editors. I, I want them to, like, have regular lives, too. I want them to work a regular day it's and go home, right? Thank you, you know? for saying that publicly. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, Finally. I mean, I do. So, <laughs> you know, and, and so to get more content, we need to figure out how to be more efficient. And a new website makes us so much more efficient, makes the site, I mean, thus far, our performance tests have been, like, they're just, like, 10x times better than the current site, Oh, right? more than that sometimes. Yeah, more than yeah. that sometimes. And, I mean, I'm trying to be generous because I don't want to oversell. We haven't sure. gone live yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right? It's um, going to be awesome. It's going <laughs> to be awesome, right? And so, like, it's coming. It's going to, I think, like, the, the tests have been well. The screenshots look better. The players have been performing better. Things people, like, people ask me, they're like, hey, can I go full screen on YouTube? And we're like, yes. And that's, like, by the way, that's, like, an exa- a great example of something stupid. Like, people are like, I mean, here in the office, I'll have people come knock on my door. Andy, you know we can't go full screen in YouTube. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I know. And it'll just keep coming, right? Like every couple of weeks, I'll get someone Since to come. 2010. Since 2010. Since 2010. Right. Yeah, it's, it's kind of true. And you're just like, yeah, I know. And like we try to and we investigate it and it just becomes, it's such a hard task for us to do on the current technology. It's ridiculous. Like on the new technology, all the scripting and everything is a lot cleaner and works a lot better. I mean, we, like we go, I, I literally go to Margaret and Sean and Curtis and Kristen, who's our team, kind of development here, great, amazing people. They've worked so hard for this. I can't explain to you how hard they've worked for, for this to get done. Um, but, you know, I'll be like, hey, I, I got an idea. Can we do this? And they'll be like, oh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And, like, and like an hour later, they'll have an example of it for me. And I'm like, wow, that is amazing. Or even they'll go, Andy, surprise, look at the site. And they'll just implement things that we talk about in 24 hours. And we've never had that flexibility have, before. I mean, oh, no. I mean, it's taken us months half a year to introduce some changes right yeah. and um and so the change rate is ridiculous so one of the things that i know is the big question is the user blogs that was right. the first thing that we that that i you know and this is my call by the way just so everybody knows this is a decision i make as editor-in-chief and it was that you know 
there's YouTube out there. There's Medium out there. There's sites that do better blogging than we did. Um, and if we did it on this site, we would need to build a whole new set of tools, right, to give to the users. And then on top of that, our current site, because the technology is so bad and the, like, spam community works so hard to spam you, we were fighting them nonstop, like, and nonstop. And I think the reason, like, we lost content and deleted stuff was that we were we thought it was spam, right? And we were having a hard time differentiate between our own content and spam because we were getting hit so hard right. and battling it constantly. So step one was, if we're going to do restart, which is essentially what it is, like hit restart to some degree, we're going to bring over every single story we still have. Any story that didn't disappear is coming over. It's going to be on the <laughs> And maybe site. someone that did disappear. We don't right? know. <laughs> and, and maybe it's true. We really Whatever's don't know. coming in the big net. But we, I, I've seen it all over there. And I mean, I'm talking, I think we transferred over 50,000 stories. Crazy. So, I mean, there's a lot of stories we moved over. They're there. They'll be there on day one. We looked. At, there's a ton of user blogs that are there. We, we, we have them. We still have them. We still have all your information that's on the old website. We're going to try to build a community.gameinformer.com where we can go and put all those content so that people can see it and read it. An archive, not not something to build onto. Well, we can build onto it. Okay. That's, I mean, that's the thing is we can choose how to spend our time, right? What I want to see is I want to see people use the site, see how they feel about it, right? Um, I don't know how we would integrate user blogs. I mean, I think someone pointed this out on the post was like, hey, I didn't even know you guys did user blogs. And it's like, yeah, because we never really figured out how to promote it. And two, there's a million other places to do it. I mean, like, I think a lot of people tend to do, you know, at the time when we built it, YouTube wasn't as big as it is now. And I'm not, like, driving you to YouTube. I think writing is important, by the way. But, yeah. but like, I mean, it's easy for someone to, like, spit off, a you know, an idea on YouTube and put up a video in five minutes than to write something, right? Than to, than to, than to take the time that you do like in a magazine or in, on a website to, to put in images and make choices and, and kind of cater the content. It's a different experience. But um, we want to figure that out, right? And like I removed forums too. Our forums right now stink. They've stunk, you know, our old, old forums were great. And then we made the mistake when we went forward and someone said this was going to work and then it never worked and it was just a disaster. And I tried to find solutions and it was not working. Um, so forums is something else we could bring back. That could be another place where people could write stories and share stories and share opinions. We just have to figure out what that is. It's all stuff that we can do. But what we're trying to do is get this first step out. And at that step, you're going to lose all your profile pages. You're going to lose your user blogs. Your profile page is much simpler now. I mean, we're trying to make the interface between the user and us a little simpler. Um, and I think, obviously, it's tough because we are... I mean, I, I everyone has a lot of love for this site. Yeah. Reiner and I have love for Old Yellow, which was a disaster. That was you our know, first website. That was our very first website. Old Yellow. Um, yeah, to put her it down. was Yellow. <laughs> it was <laughs> Yellow, yeah. Uh, I mean, that was a site that... You know, it's so funny, Curtis, who helped with this site, you know, we were like, we should make a website. And like Curtis goes, will you let me buy this book on how to code in HTML? And we were like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he read that. Cover to cover and then built a website. And then came in like the next it day awesome. and like built a website. And we were like, that's cool. That's amazing. And, and you know, we just like went from there. And like, you know, and I think, you know, we obviously learned a ton of things about how to make websites and how to do that stuff over time. But Could the most important thing is it's simpler, <laughs> it's faster, it's better. It's, 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 it's people are like, I, don't, I want a desktop version. There's a desktop version. It runs like a desktop version. It's just yeah. a lot cleaner. Um, it is responsive. So it'll go to your phone. It'll go to any size device that you use. Um, it's You'll gonna, be able to close ads on the mobile version now. Yeah, I mean, like all those things are things that we can address, right? Yeah. And try to find new ways to do it. And it just starts here. So I'm not saying no to anything. Like I'm not saying no that, that I won't ever give users the ability to blog again. I just, I have to look at what my priority is probably to get all the old blogs up first, right? You know, and then I have a, some systems that as we go online, we need to get them up to work well. And that's a long story and you just don't want to hear it. It's just kind of the back end stuff that we need to do that okay. is a priority. Sure. But I mean, the top priorities we have on our list, if, if you talk about content, created content or, 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 or development tasks, making that site for the users is up there. I mean, I don't want people to think that we don't care about their content. We do. We just wanted to get this new site up and running and tested and going. And then we can start to work with them to figure out what we're going to do next. You also recommended in your post, which is on the site now, gameformer.com, saying like, hey, you might want to back up your stuff. Yes. Do you I, still recommend that? I do, because I, this is a website that I'm taking things from that deleted my very first story I wrote on it. 
right? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm I'm just trying to be honest and 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 straight up about it. And that like, look, it happened to me. <laughs> My content's gone, you know. And I made this stupid thing, right? So um, I don't assume there's going to be problems, but I don't want to have something go wrong and have someone who made great content or content they cared about lose it, right? right? So I'm asking them, if you have the time and you care about it, back it up. I hope that I will be backing it up and that I will be putting it back on our community site, but I don't want to make any promises because I haven't done it yet, right? That's, that's the next thing we're going to build and try to get ready and then integrate into the, the new site as it goes up. Um, you know, even today, I mean, today I had, we had disaster city. I mean, it's like anything it's, it's, it's technology and you never know. And there's always something today. There was something, um, we should have more testing later today. I still hope to launch it next week. Next week. I do. I hope that next Tuesday we can launch this. That's our current plan. I mean, I'm trying to be straight up with you guys. I mean, we hope to, yeah, in the morning before, you know, in the middle of the morning, like 5am, we're going to start. And people will still just go to GameInformer.com. Nothing funky. Still go to GameInformer.com. All of the okay. old links will work. Everything should be <laughs> as as <laughs> planned, right? I mean, uh-huh. I, you know, um, the best way uh-huh. laid plans, right? I, I just, because once we turn it on, there's kind of no going back. We think what we've got is great. We're excited about it. Uh, we've had nothing but a fantastic experience building things with it. So, and I mean, it's fun too. Like there's, like right now, there's some basic things on there, but there, we put in a bunch of fun tools that are going to make, I think, we can do some really cool looking features. That I think are going to be fun. They're going to be able, be able to enable the writers to do them in more interesting ways because they'll have more tools to enter more screenshots. We've got this cool like kind of table of contents tool that kind of you can kind of jump around with. We've got, um, we can do completely custom pages. I mean, there's just a lot of things that we can do. I think it looks a lot better. It's easier to read. Being mobile friendly. I mean, that's the thing for how, for not having a mobile site, more of our traffic comes from mobile than desktop, which is yeah. like every site in the world. But for us who don't have a mobile friendly of a site, that's kind of amazing, right? Right. Um, and so, and I think that's another testament too that like our fans love to come to our site and they love this site. And that's why I'm kind of the horrible, you know, I'm, I'm killing it out back, right? <laughs> but uh, I think they'll find that like being able to engage like this will be pretty cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I found thus far it's worked really well for me and just like, quick conversations, being able to hop around, uh, being able to find the content you want, um, being able to like, you know, we don't have the recommendation engine yet, but I think we're going to be able to like help you find other stories you want over time. These are some of the things we have planned to add. So um, I think it's going to make a big difference. And I think it's going to make it where some of the things that we maybe don't do online, like in our cover stories, we're going to be able to do. We're going to have a better video player, which I know people want a better video player. Faster at least, yeah. Yeah, like... um, so there's there's a lot of things that we think will be big improvements that yes you lost the user blogs and yes it stinks but they're they're not they're not 110% dead yet they're just dead that's right not now. a real percentage uh, i know it's not uh, but i mean like we we'll have to see what we can do if we if yeah. we want if we want to be able to do it cuz that is the thing we do have to come up with a way to do it so we can fight the spam in a reasonable way if we can't right. and people are on there putting up every nfl game and every like you know, Viagra, you know, coming out our ears. Um, I, 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 you know, that's, that's the hard part. We, we can't do that. It's just, it's too hard for our team to keep building content and building the website. If we just sit around and fight spam. Yeah, absolutely. We have some questions and comments from the community. Uh, just to, to get this feeling out there, you've already expressed it a little bit, but Jack Gardner, friend of the show, friend of extra life writes in just saying, woof, death of the death of blogging here really hurts. It does. I think that was a big sentiment. It's like, that really hits my heart. The idea of losing all this. We talked about it for a long time. Yeah, we did. I mean, it wasn't, this wasn't like a quick decision. Right. I mean, and like I said, it, it's not a hundred percent. It's just highly likely that they're not, that we're not going to let them for now. Yeah. I mean, for it's, now. It's, it's just like, cause we building the foundation. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. We have to see if we can, what we can do. And if we can't, it, this is going to be a reality. And yeah, Jack, I mean, Jack was an intern. Yeah. Lewis was an intern. He does blog hurting for us. Like, last night he put a tweet out that was like, this is my last blog hurting. And I was like, I am such an asshole. <laughs> Uh, I, I felt really bad when I read that tweet from Lewis. I, I was like, I feel bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's people who are like, I, I really just got into this and I don't want to discourage game writers. I mean, part of the reason we started is I wanted to encourage people to write about games. Yeah. I mean, I, we, we think that's important. We want people to get good at games and go forward with games. So I, it, it, like I said, it hurts. But 
it's just a choice that I think we can't avoid right now for the overall benefit of the site and the community. This is the yeah. unfortunate change. Sometimes change is painful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dominic uh, Sachoki says, is a complete review archive in the works for the new website? Because they really like just being able to dive into the history and seeing Game Informer's old reviews. Uh, we have a legacy page that worked and then didn't work and then worked. I think last time <laughs> I checked, it worked. Okay. There's we, we have like the new site has like the review page has a, a pretty slick kind of like, like UI that you can go through and kind of search through various things. Once again, there might be missing reviews. We did look through our legacy list. There were some some print ones that we had put in place that are also missing. So we have to go through and start fixing those things. But yeah. we, we didn't see these. I, I spent about uh, last week doing a lot of testing. And this is where we started to go through and like, let's start seeing to see what holes there were. And this was one of the holes we found. I mean, I'm, I'm being upfront with you guys. You, you, you know, you, you can find, you can find problems. It's not perfect, but we're going to go back in. We're going to try to get those old review archives filled in um, and make sure that if nothing else, the score is there. Um, you know, and, and also too, I mean, I, I think this is important to know, like the magazine has been limited by our website over the last six or seven years, because if I wanted to change the way we do reviews, I couldn't do it because I had to change the website to make that happen. And it was locked in place more or less. And I was locked in place. So now, and we've spent time on this, we've looked at maybe changing the way we do reviews. Um, it's not done yet. Do you know what I mean? But like, that's the kind of thing that this can bring, right? And so I think it'll, I think there's a lot of things like, you know, games that are in early access, games that are, um, you know, persistent world games that we want to find ways to address and deal with in the review sake. I mean, I think our classic score will still be there. Those things aren't going away, but we, we can change the way we do those. I actually, we've added comments to reviews, which I know some people want. Yeah, yeah that's wild. So, bring uh, it on. <laughs> I thought about <laughs> nerds about those. This would be great. You should review Skyrim for VR again, Kyle. Oh, that'd be fun. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I thought about ha having the system automatically do a first post that just said, you're an idiot on it <laughs> so that we can kind of get it out of the way. Like, they would just automatically be there on every review uh -huh. as the first comment. Like, and, it, and you would be the one. It would say, yeah, 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 just, you're an idiot. Right, yeah, just right, like, right. GI bot, you're an idiot. <laughs> Worst review I've ever read. Um, to get it out of the way. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, uh, we'll, let, we'll let the community put that post on <laughs> the challenge is out now. there everybody yeah, so, uh, yeah matthew is wondering is there any chance that uh searching this time around for content will be improved from searching yes. on the current site yes it's okay awesome. well, you can't the search on the current site doesn't even work <laughs> don't tell them that Andy. i know i'm sorry i'm not it's just i'm so ha you don't understand how happy i am at, uh, to move on yeah the search doesn't work we've had trouble trying to get the search to to to, to be functional the new site this is not the final search we want that's going live but it it works we found a couple of really odd, like if you do this certain capitalization in this one way, we do get a couple of like weird results. Okay. But most times, anything that I've looked for, I found. There we go. What more do you want? It's still so, miles better. Oh yeah, it's yeah, it's, okay. it's light, 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 light years better than what we have now. Yes, it will work. Twelve parsecs better. Yes. Okay. Uh, Grimfeather is wondering: Are user profiles staying intact? No, you have to rebuild those. Correct? No, there we have them. We just don't know. I, I didn't know people wanted them, to tell you the truth. I, I didn't. I kind of would check around every once in a while. I didn't see people making that much, made that many changes to them, truthfully. Yeah. So I was like, I don't think people are using them. I mean, there's been an outcry yeah, of course. with this post. Um, but I didn't think they wanted them. I also didn't think, you know, Lights Out was as important as it was, right? So oh, that I, was the overwhelming feedback. I, it is give me Lights Out. Yeah. Yeah. It's moved way up the list. <laughs> That's the point. Um, but the, um, it's... I think I have to see what it's what it's what it what people really want it, right? I mean, I think you go like, yeah, I want it because it's got a lot of great memories. I saw someone post that on there, and it's like, I don't know that I can preserve memories, right? That we, I think we have, I think that we're going to lose some memories, but like people aren't using them, right? And and that's the concern. If they're not updating their profiles, there's no reason to have a big profile. Um, it's better to have less data on you and make it just easier to do, right? And easier to manage and easier for you to manage too. Like, you can come to the website. All you need to know is your username and your login, and you're good. Yeah. Right? So, Grimfeather is wondering, the new comment system is Discuss, yes. which is across a bunch of different web, uh, websites here. He says, with the Discuss integration, what's to stop the comment section from becoming a like fest? I appreciate that the current system gives all comments equal weight by simply displaying them chronologically. Yes. I mean, I think it's supposed to... I've actually, last night, I was convinced it was not posting them chronologically I, I there's times i don't know what our comment system is doing and once again i know i'm making fun of our, our old website. site right yeah, oh, our okay. old site. like our new site does actually do them in order i once we go live 
I will spend more time because we've put comments on there and they've all gone in order so far that I haven't seen them change according to likes and the, and the tests we've done. There's no test like live, right? There just isn't. And yeah. when the users get on there and we see how it performs, we'll see what it's kind of going to do. And, and I'll tell you this, this goes back six months ago when we first started, people are like, any way we want to do for, for comments. And I was like, we're going to do discuss. And people were like, okay. And they're like, Hey, do we need to do this? We need to do that. I'm like, Look, we don't need to do anything else. Let's just do discuss. And if our community hates it, we'll look for something else. I mean, we, we've we already planned for if it's something that they really, really hate, we can look to replace it. Now, that'll be, a, that'll be its own thing if we do that. But, like, I'm pretty happy with what, it's, with what I've seen so far. Um, but let's see how it works in the live. I mean, sure. a lot of things that I've seen, I've asked people why they hate it. And they just kind of go, I just hate it because. A lot of people say, IGN uses that. I never like IGN's comments. That, that's a yeah, big Yeah, and they'll be like, oh, it has ads on it. I'm like, well, I turn the ads off. I, I, it, it's customizable. Like, we can change the way it performs. And we've kept it very simple, very basic. Um, I, I, think, I think it will be better. I think it will let more people comment. I think it will get more people engaged. And I think it will have, I, I, I believe it will be better. But I'm open to it not being better and trying to find a solution if we have to. Yeah, and it's just easier to, if you want to leave a comment, you could do it pretty much immediately. Yeah. Opposed okay. to having to sign up and do all that stuff. And you can see, like, when you get replies and stuff like that. Like, that's something. Dude, that's all, what Guild and Kraken wants to know. There's yeah. a notification for yeah. when you get a reply Dude, to a comment? It has an overlay you can click, and it brings over an overlay over on the top of our site that lists all your conversations. And you can actually Ooh, sit there and start to go through your conversations that's all nice. on an overlay while you're on the site doing other things right yeah. you can get emails to every single thing that you've done and like reply to them on that you can like do things remotely to interact with this it's so much easier you know what i mean like at least for me i feel like it, it there's there's no struggle right there's no like editing is a lot easier you're not encountering all the like kind of bugs that we have that we're not fixing <laughs> right like i think it's it's a huge improvement even if it I like the idea of being able to, like, I mean, we've wanted to put thumbs up, thumbs down on things for a while, just so people, if they want to just in passing, go like, hey, man, I like that. This guy's said something interesting, right? Uh, we can we can put, we can feature comments. We can put them at the top. So, oh, like, the if the writer of the of the piece is like, hey, this is an interesting piece that I want people to, to focus on. This is an interesting conversation that's civil and organized and talking about games. We can highlight it, right? I, I think those are all cool things that can help push the conversation and hopefully... I think make it easier for the you know the editors to continue to be better about talking to the community and the community yeah. you know then we can listen. There we go. Uh, Spartan one eighty six. Very important question. Do we still have replay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Content's not going to change drastically. No. No. I, and and that's, a new show be called better. The Two Andies, <laughs> uh, which is a daily oh. live stream. Uh huh. Cool. You guys want to produce that or? <laughs> well, I mean that's well we got a video team, Hanson. Oh, we is that you? right? And Leo uh, and, and Jacob, you and the intern Leo. in the yeah. booth. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, um, yeah, I mean, the content's going to be the same, and that's, I mean, that's the hope. The reason we're doing this is that we can maybe do more content. Yeah, you know, we can bring in some new things and and make the content that we do better, and the pages that they're displayed on work better, and like, you know, it's an improvement. Yeah, you know, it's not the, the same content. The only reason we get rid of content that we do right now would be because no one likes it. No. Yeah. You, you guys have no idea how much time is spent by the editors just building a story shell on that old website and just getting it functional and ready for publishing. Totally. I and mean, there's a lot of work that is just work time that's just lost right there. And that is now going to be lickety split. Like we're going to be able to do a lot more like Andy's saying. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So it'll change. Change is scary, but change you're feeling confident, scary. Andy. I do. I, I feel, I feel, I mean, I... I mean, I've already made the choice. <laughs> I've already gone off the edge. I mean, I waited <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I shared the post when it was, you know, too late. It, the, you know, like this is happening. The first uh, day I saw the prototype, I was like, just launch it. Just do it. <laughs> That's how we've been for He's weeks. Like, it's just like, one we, can just, we can just, just pull the trigger, just right? Just do it. Oh, we're, I'm so off. excited. I cannot wait. It's, <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I mean, people that have used it, people I've shown it to, they've been excited about it. I mean, it, it's got, it's just, I think it's visually more engaging. It's easier to read. Uh, I think it's going to make better. It smells better. I just think it's going to, you know, and the thing is too, is that, you know, and I, I'm just, I, I don't know what we're going to do, but you know, like for now we make like a post that says, Hey, we're on Twitch. Come watch us do this show. Yeah. Um, I don't have this at launch, but I mean, you know, I talk about what we can do once we have control is that I can have, when you land on the homepage, the very top be the video of us on Twitch. 
right? I can have when you navigate around, have that same thing go into an overlay and you can sit there and watch as you cruise around. Like I, we can find ways to engage more and, yeah. and, and, and get you to the content you want. You know, live GI shows, whatever we can do, it'll, it'll help us when we can promote those things and get those in front of the viewers rather than have like a, a weird post that's like, we're on there now. Okay, we're not on here anymore. Update. You know totally. I mean? Like it, it changes the way we can interact and the way we can do stories. So um, I have a lot of plans. I have a lot of things that I'm excited to do and introduce. Like I said, the first step was kind of have a, a parody, what we have now of doing posts and getting out replay, and yeah. super replay and the GI show. But I, I, there's next steps and we want to get there and, and, and show you what we can do next because I'm really excited, uh, particularly about how we can integrate more things from the magazine That's and, do huge. Some other, and do some more things so that people can get to our content the way they want, as fast as they want. The way, you know, I already said the way I'm insane. Sorry, it's been a bit, it's been busy, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Like you've been I working think, on a website for I, five I, years. Just that it works on mobile, like it's, you don't have to zoom in to read it. Like it's awesome. Yeah. it's gonna be better. It's, it's gonna be upgrade. better. It's gonna okay. be better. In theory, I'm next pretty, week. I, I believe it's gonna be better. And by the way, if it's not better for you, I, I'll put up posts. I will try to answer as many questions. I'll sit there and read your comments. I will take in all the data. I've I've offered up, and once we go live, I'll either do it uh, like a, a stream or I'll, I'll I'll figure out a way to put a live chat kind of, you know, like some kind of mod that I can put in the site that'll let me do some live chat. We'll sit, I'll discuss it with you, hear the feedback from the users and see what I can do. I am not going to appease 100%. <laughs> just so people know. Like, there are going to be people that are mad. At the end of the day, I even saw it like on yesterday, they're like, I'm leaving, I'm out, bye, see you later. Bye, Felicia. Like, it was all <laughs> over the place. And that's, it, I, that's I, I, sad. I'm sad to see anyone go. I want everyone to stay and read our site. But we have to change, and and I'm just we're we're gonna make this change. I hope you'll ride it out with us and and see where we go, and and, and I mean, they didn't see the site and they left yet. I was like, that's a little rude. <laughs> but I mean, like you do what you be you be you. I'm all about you be you and you. And you can be you at the new GameInformer.com oh, yeah. <laughs> launching next week. There we go. Hey, you guys want to have some fun? Uh, read some community yeah. emails yeah. here. Okay, here we go. Uh, so people write into podcastgameinformer.com with. Dares, feedback, comments, questions, news stories. Links. Links. Yeah, anything under the sun. Send it to podcastinginformer.com. We're going to read through some of our favorites, who's our absolute tippy-top favorite, and then honor that person. Andy, I don't think you've seen this yet. By putting them on the big board behind you, we're going to put a pin where they're from. Now, we've had a tough time doing this. <laughs> There's been a lot of feedback about, this is embarrassing. Your geography skills are embarrassing. Especially, like, state abbreviations have killed us. So, the good uh, Reverend John Michael from Missouri. Uh, he just emailed and he said, hey, this will make the show better. I'm going to give you a piece of paper with all of the state abbreviations so you can stop being confused about Michigan versus Missouri and all that stuff. That's so. on you, man. Yeah, Dude, I mean, that's is, the group. That's the group, but I, it's very hard. This, I know this was your idea. I remember you saying this. Oh, this absolutely. was your idea, that you wanted to have this crazy map with dots <laughs> on it. Uh, I stand by it. It's just, we're very stupid, Andy, is the one catch. Why did you get well, such a small map? Because there's a budget, I think. <laughs> Look, we got to we got to launch a new website. We it's can't be throwing money at court. First maps. email. Here we go. First email. Chandler, Arizona. This guy. Do you Chris, know where Arizona is? How dare you? All right. It's AK Chris, on the map. Don't bring it up. Audio <laughs> listeners will kill themselves. Chris Bartlett <laughs> writes in from Arizona. He says, "Hey, Ben and crew. I want to say that after last year, I'm actually more excited about Microsoft's show at E3 than Sony, despite the despite the fact that I haven't turned on my Xbox One in over a year. Uh, Microsoft at least showed a wide breadth of games on stage last year, even if they're all games I'd rather play on my PS4. Sony, on the other hand, uh, brought out all the same games they've been dragging out for three years now with little droplets of new info about them. Do you guys prefer the nuggets of new information that Sony seems to be gunning for or the more trailer-loaded shotgun approach that Microsoft took last year? Uh, as someone who's covering it, yeah, it's tough to get the shotgun blast, like because we have to write all that stuff. Uh -huh. But as a viewer, like just someone who's taking it in, I like I like lots of trailers. I, I like, like lots of announcements. But I need like some setup. I still like seeing people on stage doing a little preamble before the trailer rolls. Even yeah. every time, I like that. Yeah, I think for me, it's more the surprises, the stuff I didn't know about. Whoever has the most of those is the more intriguing show for me. Rather than seeing like you know another thirty minutes of Horizon or something like that, that's great. The game yeah. looks amazing. But you get that little nugget of like, what is that indie game I've never heard of? That looks cool. Uh, those are the shows I like where it's where I'm learning more and more. And I think Microsoft, since they don't have a lot of first party, focused more on third party stuff and they had more new stuff than Sony did. 
So I think I gravitated more toward enjoying that one a little more even though Sony probably had the better lineup for their system, right? Right, more games I'm actually excited to play, but just for learning new yeah. things. And exclusives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Andy? I mean, Microsoft has to have more third-party stuff there because they have next to zero first-party <laughs> support. And that's their own fault. And and basically, Microsoft, I, and it, from what I know and what apparently I've been told, like they throw the money around so third parties go there. Yeah. Sony has said, hey, we're going to focus on our games. And so, I, you know... They are different. I mean, I, I think the, the reader nailed it, right? I mean, he, he explained the two shows to a T, and I think that's the same thing we're going to get this this year again. We're going to see a lot of announcements at the Microsoft event, but no first-party games or not enough first-party games. And then on the Sony side, they are going to focus on their games and give us little tidbits more. But, I mean, I, I do like when I learn more than just... I mean, I've walked away from the, the Microsoft press going conference going, number one, I forgot half those games. <laughs> number two what the hell was that game? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like you know, you're just like, I don't even know what that was. Right, like that weird Gore Galactic. It, yeah, like, or like, was it Matter, the one Gore Verbinski Connect game where it's like <laughs> droplets of goo? Or it's like, what am I looking yeah, at? Yeah. Just, I, it doesn't even make sense. So I, I, I like a mix between the two. I like focus. You know what I mean? I like focus. I do like learning new things. So I'm, I agree with Reiner. I would love to see a mix between the two, right? That, that, that found a way to, to really explain what the hell is going on. Or... You know, and I'm totally going off, but like I kind of looking forward to E3 changing in that I want E3 now that the consumer is there to stop focusing so far away, right? And and focus more like on what's happening this year and do a better job of like explaining the games that are coming out this year, right? I, I don't want to see a trailer that's like red eyes and then like a logo, right? And be yeah. like, yay, you know, and you're like Metroid eh, Prime logo. Here yeah, we go. you're like, yeah. yay. I mean, it's nice, I guess, that it's announced, but it doesn't really do anything for me at this conference. I mean, I want to have the developer or hear the developer say, hey, you know, this is what we're doing. This is where it's going. Here's some new modes that we're working on that we think are cool. Like, I think that's way more interesting for me. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mike from Edmonton says, hey, GI crew, recently I was in an elevator on my way up to a lawyer's office when the guy getting on with me swiped an access card to get access to a private floor. After some small talk, the door opened for him to get off, and to my surprise, a large Bioware logo and map graced the entrance to the floor. I had no idea their office was there and so badly wanted to just casually follow him off and just look around. My question for you is, when visiting developers for stories, how hard is it not to... How hard is it not to try and take a wrong turn or open a door just to see what you find? I mean, they usually give you a tour, right? Like yeah. you just kind of walk through the office or like, here's your artists, you know, the programmers are over here. And then you see like, you know, if you're at Naughty Dog, it's like, that's that secret room where they made PS4. You yeah. know, nobody's allowed in there. It's a security door. The PlayStation um, 9 from the commercial is still floating <laughs> in that room somewhere yeah. with the Naughty Dog. Yeah. yeah. I mean... If you want to be invited back, you don't run into a room you're not supposed to come into, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it might be fun. I mean, I certainly, I mean, I would have, I'm with Reiner. I, like that red door is the one that gets me. I'm like, I want to know what's going on in there. Like, I really want to know. Uh, I ask questions about it. Yeah. Certainly when I'm there, like, I, I let them know that I would love to go in there, right? But I, I don't think doing that. Though I have talked to developers, by the way, which is funny. You just talk about like people in passing. Yeah. Uh, I have talked about developers that, like during GDC, it happens a lot too because there's a lot of people moving around like in San Francisco and there's developers in San Francisco, but even at like, like Bungie's at like a mall kind of thing, like in, in, in Bellevue. Yeah. And so like the people will be coming back from lunch and it'll be like the three of us coming back from lunch. Like, oh, yeah, hey, yeah, lunch was great. What a sandwich. And then <laughs> people will like jump onto the line and try to like walk in with the like I had pastrami what yeah, about hey, you whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. <laughs> and like try to just like come in through the door totally. with, the, with the rest of the group oh my god uh, and they get busted certainly you know I think most times but I think there have been times when there have been I've heard stories of developers and like who is that right, right. <laughs> don't do that listeners not I, mean, I would not move. I would not I would not suggest that you do that <laughs> no but I mean people do try oh people yeah people do try Todd Howard was giving me a, a walkthrough of Bethesda Game Studios when Fallout 4 was coming out and he took me down a hallway he wasn't supposed to and he's like whatever you do don't look at this wall right here and I'm like I have to you're pointing at it <laughs> like, like I, I just need to know and what was on that point. wall Reiner oh, I can't say but. oh okay buddy right into <laughs> podcast.com if you want Reiner to tell that story uh, I like this Bioware example because that is just like Bioware is a studio that's still like connected to this hotel like a radisson so it'd be so easy just to be staying at the hotel and have no idea that bioware and all these amazing games were made right there right, right next there. to you it's crazy uh i always feel self-conscious 
it happens almost every time I go to a studio. When I get lost going to the bathroom, it's like, I hope they don't see me wandering around and thinking that I'm trying to like scout out and see some secrets. I'm just genuinely that stupid. I do not know where the bathroom is. <laughs> yeah. Time. yeah. Yeah. I think they know. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> Matt Bala from Buffalo, New York says, hello, uh, Ben Hansom and the Hanselinos. Thank you. Um, he says, everywhere you look, it's Switch coverage with good reason. It's a stupendous achievement. It's touted as the first portable gaming console. But seriously, folks, Can we give it up for the Sega Nomad? I cannot think of another system that played console cartridges on the move. Sure, it consumed a record six AA batteries for only two hours of enjoyment. However, so many bus rides to school were filled with general chaos and Streets of Rage 2. Are there any unique systems first that you can recall, US or otherwise, that preceded the titans of gaming consoles that we have today? That's a good one. Well, yeah. Man, the, the Nomad was cool. It's it was basically, a, I like I had a Game Gear, and the Nomad was just like a huge, chunky Game Gear that could actually put Genesis cartridges in, right? That was the idea? Yeah. Well, the, the Turbo uh, Graphics. Yeah, the Turbo Graphics had yeah. one that did yeah. that. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. It had like these like kind of like flimsy cartridges that you could put in the handheld. and then The Who Cards. It, the Who Cards? Who Cards. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, yeah, they were like even flimsier than credit cards, I think. No, they weren't. They, they were, weren't? I mean, okay. it, was, it, was, it was solid state. It wasn't, okay. it wasn't just a piece of plastic. They were smaller, though. Yeah, okay. They were smaller. They were about the size of a credit card. You were correct. But you could, you could put that in the home console and then take the cartridge out and put it in the handheld, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. God. Yeah, I guess it's just a weird one. Like in the vault the other day, I saw we have a modem for the Genesis. It's like, what? I didn't even know this thing existed. Yeah. yeah. yeah but you could was... like play NBA Jam with neighbors, it said. It was confusing yeah. exactly it's if like it was cult. just like sharing well, stats because, or. I mean, well, they didn't have. You could play, it would just kind of link you together to play. If a game had multiplayer locally, they would kind of connect you through the internet. It wasn't like designed or built multiplayer in a lot of ways. Right. So it was ahead of its time, yeah. let's say. Yeah, I mean, I think those kind of innovations are great, right? I mean, they lead to where we are today. I mean, I still remember when, I mean, the oohs and ahs when I believe Dreamcast was like, we have a port for, you know, your phone cable on it's here. Crazy. We were like, oh my God, I can plug, it's got a modem on it. <laughs> uh, you know, like that that was a big deal, right? And uh, it was a big deal. But I mean, a lot of crazy things were, you know, around back in the Atari 26. 100 had a bunch of weird peripherals that did a lot of weird stuff that did not work well, right? Like <laughs> like cassettes that you would play to download the data onto the yeah. the machine. Like oh, there's weird. there's always been weird peripherals as time goes on. Um, but, you know, the, I think they move things forward. I mean, I think that's just them trying to make better games, more interesting things. But I, I actually picked up my TurboGrafx portable thing the other day. Well, not the other day, but within the last year. And man, that thing... Switch is so much better. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's like, yeah, that was neat. I'm not going to play this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We were thinking about like the Super Nintendo Satellaview, however you yeah. pronounce it, that weird Japanese only thing where you could like stream games. They had like a Link to the Past sequel that came out yeah. for that. They had a yeah. Zelda and a, like a Link to the Past thing where you would play as like an avatar that you created. That's so insane. I, the weird thing about that, just as an aside, is like, I don't think there's a way that that exists anymore. No. It's just like, no, it's not like, I don't think even Nintendo can go into their archives and like, pull that out to play it. I think it's just it's just gone forever. Frank Cifaldi right? has lost sleep about it. Yeah, yeah it's like, all right, it was in the satellite at some point. I don't know, moving on. Maybe it's still up there, just like floating around. Yeah, just need the right say. antenna. Uh, Joseph from New England, uh, he says, hello, informers of the game. That's you guys. He says, I'm 13 years old and I recently just built my first gaming computer. Congratulations. Uh, and I want to play open world games like GTA. The problem is I'm not allowed to play M-rated games unless I can give a good case on why I should be able to play them. <laughs> Basically, I can play it if it's a light M or not a very mature game. My question light is... <laughs> light M. <laughs> My question is, what are some good sandbox open world games that are either teen or below that you can use to show off his new computer? It's such a specific question, but I really like this because you start running through your mind of all the open world games that you'd want to play on a PC... It's like, yeah, that's too bloody. That's what rough. Is Just Cause? Are those that's M-rated? rated M. But that's like a light M, though, right? <laughs> I think so. It's like, especially it's a lot like goofier. You, yeah. And I don't if you remember just, the ESRB issuing murder. light M. <laughs> light M. <laughs> yeah. It's just oh, a grayed out M on the front of the box. If you focus on like multiplayer for like Just yeah. Cause 2 or something, like, well, turn the chat off and then it'll be maybe a light M. What about like the Elder Scrolls games and, and Fallout? Mm, and, that's not bad. Yeah. Those well, are, Fallout's rated really M, isn't it? Really, I guess well, Fallout's really bloody. Well. Wait, is Skyrim? I mean, you make a lot of really, sure. like, questionable choices in, yeah. like, even Skyrim. Yeah. You do yeah. some things yeah. like, do you want to murder this person? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, that's a choice. Mm. But, like, I mean, just because it's a choice this. doesn't mean it's not, like, <laughs> not poor teens. But, I mean, that's just, like, that's all just, huh. like, I, I think the best bet on anything like that, if you're if you're 13 or 14, I mean, I, I'm no parent, I, I, but, like, I mean, you've heard everything at school already. It's just a question of edu- educating <laughs> your parents, you know, to 
to to understand that that games are not so bad. Um, yeah, and then just you go know, let them know all the words that you've heard at school. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, that's maybe not the right answer. But I like, <laughs> uh, you know, I think I think there's there's something to that. I mean, or you know, play. There's there's a lot of games that you could play that are fun. You know, if you talk about you know that are on your PC. There's there's tons and tons and tons of games on the PC that you can play that uh, will show off your machine. Yeah, I mean Fortnite. Uh, you know, that's, that's, yeah, it's got that cutesy style, but like, if you really want to hit peak, it's not on steam and maybe it's not exactly what you're looking for here, but Forza Horizon three, I think is a pretty good choice for just an open world ish game. Mm-hmm. It'll give you a lot of those beats and really it still looks amazing. What about yeah, like, what's that burnout paradise? Oh, burnout paradise, paradise remaster you know? just came yeah. out. Yeah. What about like Lego city undercover? Is that on steam? I mean, that got yeah. ported to just, it is. Yeah. Right? Great game, yeah, not, not really the best open really world. Really show off the yeah. graphics of your new PC. <laughs> hey, it's a, an open world <laughs> game in a city that's true. not M rated. It's 4K blocks. It's, it's a amazing. light E. Also, this might be too boring for you, Joseph, because you're 13. You might think this sucks, but <laughs> Assassin's Creed Origins Discovery Tour? I bet that's not rated M. You can go around and learn about ancient Egypt, but you mm. just can't stab anybody? That's good learning. And you can buy that separately, right? <laughs> yeah, completely separate. <laughs> this good person's learning. not going to be a gamer after watching this. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Chris Reardon from New Bedford... Oh, God. Hang on. Let me consult. <laughs> um, hang on. Uh, for, oh, Massachusetts, of course. Uh, congratulations, Chris. Thank you. Uh, hey, y'all. I'm playing through Assassin's Creed Origins now. Good game. Great setting. But everything seems a bit dimmer after God of War. That's true. Uh, and the item description for the manuscript trinket is as follows in that game. Quote, after quite a lot of time on the road, you've perfected the art of folding this sheet into a cunning little bird. Now, what should you call this art? Clearly, this is a reference to origami, which originated in Japan. Is this a very subtle, deeply buried hint that the next Assassin's Creed will be set in Japan? Maybe Bayek is channeling some kind of animus crap from a future Japanese (laughs) counterpart? (laughs) Am I crazy? Don't answer that. All right. When are they going to Japan? When is this going to happen? Well, they did already-ish, right? One of those one, one of those two D games in yeah. Japan. Yeah. Well, that was China, wasn't China, it? China. China. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Japan was in a comic. Okay, then maybe that's what I'm thinking of. There has, okay. There is. I have seen a drawing, an official drawing of a samurai assassin. So oh, it must have been I mean, comic. They, in the in like one of the early documents that I think has leaked or been around before, or I've seen bits. I think Reiner and I have seen bits and pieces of. Um, but I, I know it's been out on the greater world. I'm, I'm not breaking any NDAs or anything like that, but like it's been brought up. Oh yeah. Since the dawn of Assassin's Creed. Just haven't gone there yet. So, I mean, I think there's always a chance that it could be going there next. It feels like it's kind of a, uh, a, a, a fan request. Do you know what I mean? Whether it'll be good or not. I mean, that's, that's always the hard part is, can you make it interesting? Yeah. yeah, and I wonder with Ghost of Tsushima if that would change any plans. I have another open world game that's kind of set in that era. But and man. people seem kind of eh on Westworld, which had a twist. Yeah, yeah you that's know true. I, mean? I, I really like the twist, but yeah, 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 I could see why. I don't know if this origami thing specifically is trying to well, hint at that. Maybe it's just kind of like a yeah, cheeky there, little. There's a room in I think it's Assassin's Creed Two, where it's like all these statues of these different prominent assassins, and they keep going. There's like one from that's Egypt. We just, which we just got. There's one from Japan. Yeah, we did a replay there. when Miller yeah. explained it to oh, us. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, but there's only like two or three of those left. And then they're going to stop the series. For. Yeah, they're exactly. never going to make another one. Yeah. Never but, again. I mean, that kind of implies maybe those are locations they're going next. Yeah, could be. I mean, to answer the, the question, though, I mean, it seems inevitable, right? Like, It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. Just Absolutely. Matter of time. That's right. Lucas Adams from San Marcos, Texas says, Hey, crew, I don't have a question this week, but I do have a suggestion for something that would make for an awesome episode. Former Game Informer editor Megan Marie will be releasing her book, Women in Gaming, 100 Pioneers of Play, later this year. And yeah. I'd absolutely love it if you could get her on the show to talk about it. Uh, yeah, we would love that too. We'll try and make that happen. Let's yeah, all remember. that'd be awesome. Don't she's, forget. She's always welcome. Mm-hmm. She's just always hustling. And by the yeah, way, San Marcos, Texas. Super busy. I live there. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Mike from Tall Timbers, Maryland. It's a good name. He says, good luck finding on your big board. I will find it, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> he says, hello, GI Show. Uh, the short write-up on the Hitbox Smash Box you guys put in this month's issue got me wondering, what's your favorite niche video game accessory? Let's define niche as anything less commonly used than a Guitar Hero controller. Personally, I like the Hori 3DS Monster Hunter grip released in Japan, but available on Amazon if you want it. It looks really cool. It has like that good, deep cushion for for playing Monster Hunter on 3DS. You cool. Know what I mean? It looks comfortable, but do you guys have favorite there, accessories? Huh? What about the Wave Bird on GameCube? Uh, is that too that's, mainstream? That's too that's mainstream, a controller, right? man. Yeah. 
I, I really liked on the 360. I don't know. I guess I used the messaging service a lot or redeemed a lot of codes, but the keyboard that you could just pop onto the bottom of the controller, oh, yeah. I used the hell out of that thing, and yeah, I miss it handy. on my Xbox One. Yeah, it's handy on... What did They had they had the GameCube version of that, too. I forget. Yeah, it was they like, had like a full controller, right? It was a GameCube right? controller that, that was like split down the middle and just a keyboard <laughs> so that so people could play Animal Crossing. Yeah, and I think like things. PSO as well supported yeah. it on there. What about this, Kyle? Oh, he's Pokemon holding up Go. a Pokemon Go. Go. I don't have mine with me, but... Yeah, we just use this button. Button... And we're playing, Level po- and we're catching Pokemon. That seems great. Andy gets it. And is that fun yet in that game, <laughs> or is that still? And then what do you do with the Pokemon? You look at a number go up. It's, yeah, a video <laughs> game, Hanson. <laughs> no, you should be trading them and battling them and having a good time with really them, getting to know them and love battle them. them. You really want to battle them? I'll yes. trade them. I don't want to battle people. It's Pokemon. No one likes battling. <laughs> Uh, Derek Seish from Duluth, Minnesota says, Hey, Ben and company, I recently saw a debate over the unspoken rule of not wearing a band's merch to their show on Brian Shea's Twitter and wanted your opinion on this. I've personally always thought it was a bit too obvious to wear a band's t-shirt to the concert. Come at me, he says. <laughs> well, you uh-huh. buy t-shirts at concerts. Okay, but you don't, you don't wear them there, though. Well, you don't immediately put on that shirt, right? Okay. I, I like seeing old show t-shirts at the new show, right? Like oh, if you, okay. Like if you went to the to the stand and you bought it there, like that tour, and bought it and put it on, nah. Okay. Nah, that's bad. But that's, if it's old poor. enough. But if it's old enough. Like if it's like, you know, let, let's just pick a random band. You know, if, if it was like you like two from Joshua Tree, like the original yeah. one, right? You know, and you wore your Joshua Tree shirt to like the new U2 tour, like... It's pretty cool. Hey, you know, I don't know if it's cool, but I mean, it's like... <laughs> I, I, I'm like, yeah, I can spine. That's cool. I respect it's still that. You too, right? I respect that. I respect that. Cool. Yeah. I respect it's pretty that. acceptable. I respect that. I, I, it's acceptable, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. But if you bought the, like, you went to the front of the line and bought the new T-shirt and ripped it off in the bathroom <laughs> and put on the new one, like, yeah. uh, the, uh, nah, and anything, cool. anything you could buy at like a Walmart or Target, like those uh, Rolling Stones shirts. Uh, no, nothing. The cool Dan Riker Library of shirts. No. That's right. Every <laughs> band shirt he bought was at a Target, I believe. Yeah. Walmart. <laughs> Or gas station. What about the offshoot? I've seen a lot of this. Maybe it's because I just saw Solo. But people that wear the t-shirts matching the movie they're about to see. There's a lot of like t-shirts that have Star Wars stuff on them when they're seeing a new Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. Is that fine? No I mean, taboo there? I'd just like to point out, anyone who's watching this video can see our sense of fashion. And I can't <laughs> believe they're asking us for fashion tips. Reiner's wearing the same Super Replay shirt four out of five days of the week here. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean, good. I, I'm just saying. Still smells funny. There might be <laughs> there might be better people to ask that question. Okay, uh, you, I'm just I like I, Brian Shea on Twitter. I, I sure. Okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yes, where sir. you know what I say? Just wear the whatever the hell you want. You yeah, do what you want. It's hey, a concert. Do your own thing, everybody. Do your own thing. You got it. You uh, be you. Yesterday, Andy, can I tell a story that happened in the office that was very funny to Jeff and I? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Does it have something to do with is this, Andy? Is, or is, is, this, is, this, is this going to bore me or something? Just, oh, you're going to be so bored. No, Jeff and I were uh, working late in the office in the bullpen, and we heard Andy oh, in the other side of the office go, Hey, Brian. No, I said, later, Brian. You're uh, the only one in the office. And it was his chair. He had his he had his uh, sweatshirt on the chair. And then he's got like he's got the like some gamer chair, right? Being yeah. super tall. Like it's everyone like else has short feet. ones. So yeah. I thought it was his head like poking over the top, and it was just a super tall chair. Uh-huh. And then I walked around and I said, like, I just talked to his chair. And they those two were laughing. At me. I like the idea of the yeah. chair like slowly turning around and Andy just like starting to scream out of terror. <laughs> just like he's gonna have to talk to Shay. I like the other scenario of like Brian not saying anything to Andy <laughs> and Andy just being like what a dick yeah I, people ignore me here all the time at the office let's be let's be let's be honest <laughs> Justin Swart from Alexandria Minnesota says hey Ben and crew first a question for Hanson that sets up my question for the crew uh, he was born and raised in West Central Minnesota where I'm from cool he says blah 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 anyways he's wondering if he says I know that you're a big fan of Sunset Riders uh, and so my question is for you. Did you play the arcade version of Sunset Riders at the Games Lake County Park growing up, which is this <laughs> tiny thing in West Central Minnesota? Yes, that is exactly where I played it. Like, it's crazy <laughs> this guy would guess that. Isn't that wild? Cool story, bro. Isn't he from your town? <laughs> no, he's not. He's from Alexandria. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but he also loved Weird. playing Cormano at that tiny little arcade. Anyways. Yeah, we can all relate. He says, for you and the rest of the crew, what is your favorite arcade game or arcade game memory? Um... I, a lot of people have uh, memories of that Ninja Turtles arcade game. Yeah. Like the one. And I have that. Like, I played through it with my brother. Like, probably put like $20 worth of It coins just seems like there. you vaguely remember it, but you didn't really like it. Is that your favorite game? I, I, it's the, as far as arcade games go, like, that's the one that I always, when someone brings up the word arcade, like the, I remember playing that with my brother. Yeah. At a very young age. 
That's pretty good. Yeah. You guys seem like experts. Yeah, I think mine was holding down a Street Fighter 2 Turbo machine, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo or something like that for 20 matches in a row, I think. Really? Yeah. It was against himself. But, yes. <laughs> but that was the time but where yes, it was like, there. Uh, man, there was people at arcades, like you wouldn't believe, and there'd be a row of like five quarters. And yeah. that was like their line. Yet they're all just quarters, but they people knew, you know, they're waiting. Uh, that was awesome. Like I was dominant at that at that game at that time. And usually I'd put a quarter down, maybe win one, lose one, you know, go back in line. But that was the one time where I was just like, I'm in the zone and, <laughs> and I held my own at, at Street Fighter. And they held you up as a champion and paraded you they out did. of the arcade. <laughs> yeah. All uh, hail. Andy, what is the best arcade game ever? Okay. It, it's not the best arcade game, but, um, you know, I, I have fond memories because we used to just ride our bikes or take our go-kart to the arcade a lot when I was Wait, a kid. go-kart? That's cool. Yeah. Like, we, uh, motorized? Yeah. And, by the way, this is in San Marcos, Texas, by the way. Oh, to, really? To circle oh, wow. back around, right? So, um, but uh, there were a couple arcades there that I loved, but a, a friend of mine, when Dragon's Lair came out, we were really enamored by it. You know, the graphics were kind of crazy. I know now the, the controls seem really bad. At, yeah. at the time, they, they were acceptable, right? And... Uh, we played a lot of that game, and uh, we got good at it. So we could play the game pretty much through, you know, through it at, at will. But we also learned to play it backwards because it makes a sound when you're supposed to put the input in. So showing off. <laughs> so yeah, we <laughs> hey, would, ladies. So, so we were totally do the cool thing. Like you'd be like, you'd be like, oh my god, they're at the dragon, and we'd go like, yeah, and then turn around <laughs> <laughs> and then do it backwards, right? Like not, and so and then we of course would turn that into wherever we were in, like. When we'd go places or be like, you know, our parents would take us to Austin or San Antonio or something like that, would be like, there's an arcade. And they'd be like, they have Dragon Slayer. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, <laughs> we would do these performances, which I guess is my my 80s version of like today, like the people that just kill a dance dance, which I wish yeah, I could right, do. Right. Like watching people just slay it at dance dance is oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that was that was our version of it was was killing the last boss. Backwards. <laughs> it had to be pretty embarrassing if you messed up at that point. No, I mean, like, it was, it's, it's not even that many things to... I mean, I don't remember them anymore, but it's only, like, maybe 30 inputs, and it makes the sound every time, so you just had to, like, memorize them. It's and hardcore, just, man. Just redo them. <laughs> that's, so, that's pretty, that's pretty that great. That's my next question. Is, do you think you could do it today if, if, like, one was put in front of you? Oh. Do you think the muscle memory would kick in? Or? No. <laughs> no, there's no chance. I mean, you have to really remember, because there are a couple... I do, I do know there were... My memory says that there were a couple of sword attacks that took like kind of pre-spam mm, okay do you know what i mean to make sure because the, the window for hitting them was very small yeah, yeah i don't think i would i don't think i'd be able to do those so yeah, it's like an extra life segment that does sound pretty good <laughs> uh hey game informants i'm steven okay they have a guide for pronouncing the name steven olunai k Welcome. Uh, I'm from uh, Lagos, Lagos, Nigeria. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the reasons I enjoy open world games is because of the freedom of movement. I've always wanted to fly. The idea of just being able to take off from the ground with no other physical attri attributes, but just sheer willpower is beautiful. Watching the first flight sequence in Man of Steel might be the best I've ever felt watching a movie ever. Can you imagine? That's wild. It is a good scene, though. One of the best <laughs> scenes in that movie. Uh, but there are literally no games that are able to take that idea and run with it. In an interesting and non-boring way... Uh, just because three's land, sea, and air DLC probably had the best flight mechanics and animation, but yeah. you're just yeah. a fighter jet. And the first runner-up is probably Sansero got out of hell. Great use of momentum in flight. I hope Sucker Punch would add flight to an infamous game, but now they're working on that Ghost of Tsushima. I'm so obsessed with flying that I'm studying to become a game developer so I can develop a game that does it justice. Yeah. My question is, cool. uh, is there any supernatural or natural ability you've always wanted to have? If so, is there any game that fully encapsulates it in gameplay? And if not, how would you encapsulate it in gameplay? Okay, Kyle, right. you seem like a flight in an open world kind of guy. Yeah. Is well, anything satisfying? I, I mean, I, I like games that do like, like even like floating well. Like I think of things like Prototype or Infamous, yeah. or even Breath of the Wild, which are really good about letting you leap from high heights and kind of float and control your movement. But as far as like just from the ground taking a off, like yeah, I don't know. I, I'm kind of drawing a blank. I don't know that I've ever been really satisfied by anything in a game that would let me do that. The I like, first Crackdown was fun. The like jumping, yeah, yeah. yeah. But even Founding that kind of falls bad. into that like jumping from high heights that I yeah. really enjoyed. But it's, it's like a John flight. Carter jumping, you know, yeah. not quite flight. A John Carter reference. <laughs> <laughs> Another hell. great scene in otherwise. It is a really uh, good mediocre scene. movie. Yeah, the one I want to see and it, it'll never happen is Iceman when he makes his ice bridge. Frozone. 
Where, yeah, like, or the Incredibles version. But being able to do that in a game and kind of sculpt it yeah. and maneuver around an environment and just have him stuck to that kind of ice hmm. bath would be really cool. It would almost be like painting. Yeah. in the environment. Well, I bet you'll look forward to Lego Incredibles coming out this summer. <laughs> maybe maybe they'll they let do you know that, a crappy awesome, version of it. But, yeah. uh, I would love to see something like that in yeah. an open world game. You're totally right. That would be good. I would love like good Animorphs game. Just the ability to like capture different animals, transform into dozens and dozens of different animals. There's got to be some games that are close. Dr. Muto. Oh, you know what? You're right. Dr. <laughs> Muto really already beat that drum. Everything's already been done. Everything under John the Carter sun. and Dr. Muto. <laughs> and one comment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the flying thing, it's tough. Like, based on E3 last year, like Anthem, you're going to be flying around yeah. in that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, played a lot of Shadows of the Empire this weekend, and that yeah. has a really great jetpack. Really? I, I really do like the jetpack in that game a lot. Yeah, you're playing on Steam, right? Yeah. How is it? That The Steam version has pre-rendered cutscenes. Which I didn't know was a thing. The 64 version did not have that. So it was really? like, it was this weird, it was very nostalgic to go back to that game and then also see like a whole new thing that was never, I was never familiar with. Anything, anything okay. good? Anything juicy? No. Okay. It's all bad, but it's right. just the fact that it exists and Dash Rendar has a voice in that version of the game. Oh, weird. Yeah. Super weird. Huh. Did you guys like that game back in the day? I loved it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Classic. Let's do it on replay again. Yeah. We've done it sure. once before. Why not? Let's, let's, let's do it again. That's a lot of people referencing it after like that train sequence in Solo. People are like, oh, it's like that one level from Shadows <laughs> of the Empire. That's a great soundtrack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's it. Favorite email of the week. What do you guys like? Mm, I, uh, I, like the, I like the E3 one, the, the early one about like whether we like yeah. the, the shotgun blast or the more focused on, you know, longer trailers i also do like the flight one flight one's good because i like that and also that one's from uh an interesting part of the world no you can't okay don't let this sway your opinion don't let this sway your opinion i like e3 just because we're on the heels of it here like we're coming up on it on the eve yes yes yeah i i like the second nomad the uh the forerunners calling out stuff well you're the host i mean i know but you're the editor-in-chief what's your favorite e3 what What, because all of a sudden you guys are start listening to me (laughs) Come on, favorite. What do you think, Andy? I I, I I thought it was the E3 one as well. Okay, there we nice. go. There That's we go. Chris from Arizona. Congratulations, Chris. Putting Chandler, Arizona on the big board. That's Congratulations, man. AZ. Boink, right. we'll do it right. Okay, <laughs> that's it. Uh, and now we're going to be joined by Tim Turry and wow. Ben Rees and Imran Khan to talk about playing Mega Man 11, new Mega Man 11 content. Wow. So stay tuned for that. Cool. And welcome back to the Informer Show. I'm still here. Ben Reeves is here. I'm here. We have Imran Khan Skyping in from San Francisco. I'm not here. Never here. But who yeah. is here from San Francisco, which is very odd, Timothy Turi. Oh, hi. Welcome. Uh, we, we, you know, it's funny. Like, this is the second time Imran and I have ever hung out, and it's in, we're not in the same state, even though we, we live in the same <laughs> state and around the same city together. It's really weird deal. Also weird for the listeners that Matt Helgeson was on last week's podcast. Oh, really? And now former co-host on this one as well. Weird. Let's keep it going. Let's come up with new co-hosts. Just keep throwing them in nonstop. I guest hosted. All right, quit yeah, bragging. All right, all right cool a, it. Um, okay, what we can keep up with is Mega Man 11. Ben Reeves, you and I were on that cover story trip right. earlier this year. Imran Khan, you recently got a chance to play it. Tim, yep. uh, I believe you're in the code on a daily basis, dialing in the jump mechanics, physics, everything like that. Right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, now what is your title for Mega I, Man 11? I am a brand marketing manager on Mega Man. Um, all the, the games actually made in Osaka at the headquarters, which right. you guys know because you guys visited and right. hung out with Oda-san and Tsuchiya-san, the director and producer of the game, and checked it out yeah. before anyone else, really. Yeah, well, now the rest of the world's got a chance to play it, too. Including Imran. Oh, my God. Okay, so Imran, you went to Capcom's office in San Francisco? I did, and they had cupcakes this time, so it was great. Oh, a little cupcake, oh, that's man. Cool. That's so cute. Uh, what'd you get to play, Imran? I got to play the level that we uh, Ben had played for the cover story, and also a new level based on the new boss, Fuse Man. Ooh. Oh, okay. okay. So baseline, the the level you played, Reeves, that was the construction y one? The block man level, is that right? So that's you're you're thinking of another Robot Masters stage. Oh, Blockman okay. was the first stage that you see in the the reveal trailer. It's like a colorful blue sky, there's blocks falling. That's um, right. Okay. Yeah. You're thinking okay. the one with like the the dudes throwing the, the pickaxes and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It's that was the like other, it's the other one. So it's the other stage. Yeah. Okay. okay cool. So it's there's kind of so the, many stages. The first one you see in the trailer, man. <laughs> so you played yep. through that. You fought that boss, and then you went to Phase Man. Fuse, Fuse Man, Fuse as in man. like electricity. 
Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Tell us about the stage. So the stage, I mean, it's a electricity themed uh, Mega Man stage. It has little uh, flying guys coming at you all the time. And a, I guess I would put it like, uh, I'm trying to th- think more about the stage right now. And it's, if you've played a Mega Man electricity stage, this is like right in line with all of those. Yeah. Where you are dodging electrical currents and trying to get through specific puzzle parts. Does mm-hmm. the floor get electrified at any point in this stage? Wait, Ben, did you also see if you did the stage? <laughs> what the heck, man? Yeah, like Im- Imran's totally right. Um, so like Blockman stage has, you know, seen in like in the trailer, like there's some more pitfalls and some, you know, kind of one hit death type situations in Blockman yeah. stage. Whereas Fuse Man stage is actually, I don't think has any instant death. It's more just like hazards. And like Im- Imran was talking about, there's these timed electrical beams that like, you know, just create a perfect line from one side of the screen to the other, but they'll be interrupted by platforms. So you kind of have to find, watch, like study the patterns and find the, secret spots that or the, the safe spots to kind of you know get through all these hazards yeah well it's interesting around you say oh you know it's like other electricity based Mega Man stages I mean overall did you did it feel like hey this is about what a Mega Man game should feel like it, yeah absolutely like before I went in the meeting that day I had been playing Mega Man Legacy Collection on the Switch like that morning and when I came into Mega Man 11 I was like oh this feels immediately like all of that this is exact, exactly how a Mega Man game should feel Hey, yeah. good job, Tim. So you you really, guys really did it. You felt like your skill... So, so you felt like you're training up almost. Like you felt like it was basically one-to-one for you? I felt like I could have easily moved on from that game in the Legacy Collection to Mega Man 11 without missing a beat. Oh, that's crazy. Nice. All right. Congratulations. I'm glad somebody else has finally played it. Uh, I feel like I did a really good job when we were playing the game. I died <laughs> oh, so many boy. times. You are the proto player. That That's right. Yeah. That, God, game, that, scary. that game is uh, challenging, but... I would say challenging, but fair in that category. It's rewarding too. Did you have the same experience, uh, Imran, or are you just like a master player? I am not a master player at all. And you, Tim, managed to see me die a number of times against the boss. You should have seen uh, me against him the first like five attempts. So yeah, I mean, it was not unlike my first attempt as well. So what but is- it was definitely like it feels like if you put in the time to work at it. Like if you're if you have those Mega Man skills and that ability to judge jump distance, you're good. You can play that game easily. Yeah. yeah. So the the other thing we showed um, showed off besides just like, hey, that block Blockman's name is Blockman, and we revealed that Robot Master uh, that was hinted at at the end of the the 30th anniversary live stream, uh, and Fuse Man and his stage as well. Like we also showed off the Double Gear system, which. Um, Imran got to, to play around with like the power gear and the speed gear. And so this is this is the big thing. This is, I don't know if you remember, during a month of coverage, we had to kind of dance around. There's something that changes the gameplay that yeah, we can't quite yeah. talk about. Again, thanks to Tim and his colleagues putting that clamp down, which is pretty cool. Uh, so this is what it is. It's the gear system, right? So you can slow down time in the new Mega Man, mm-hmm. which is pretty crazy. And then the other one is which? Power gear. The power gear, which does what? Ups your power, right? It makes you more powerful. Uh, oh, tricky! It, uh, it it basically powers up like each individual Buster shot, and you can shoot faster. Uh, and then also, you know, this game you can jump, slide, shoot, and charge like two levels of charge just by default. But when you charge up all the way, uh, he has like this double Buster shot, and he like there's like some recoil. It's just a super powerful um, upgrade. So you can basically. have your Mega Man powered up. Yep. So Imran, did it feel night and day having a slow mo in a Mega Man game, or just feel like oh, it's just a handy thing to have in 2018? I mean, at first I was like, oh, I'm good enough that I'm never going to need to use this. And then like very quickly it was like, oh, well, this actually, it's not a game breaking thing. It helps. So there's certain like power ups you can, you can get if you're a robot or a speed runner. But for everybody else, you can just quickly tap the time slow button, quickly get that thing and then come back. And there are times where you feel like, oh, I, I didn't know this was coming and I feel like I would be screwed if I, you know died here but you can just tap both buttons at once and basically go into like an overpowered mode and become powerful and stop slow down time for about four or five seconds yeah and it manages to get you out of bad situations without making you feel like you're cheating the system in any way yeah yeah like the whole game you can play it like if you're a super hardcore purist or, or whatever you could not touch these the double gear system and make it through the entire experience but like i guess what i liked about it was um or how it fits in with me is that when, you know, we were talking about how hard the bosses are, like the first time you get to them, usually that first, if I have anything but max life, the first time I go to fight a robot master, I ex- kind of treat that life like a throwaway life. Like, all right, I'm going to learn a little of the pattern maybe, and I'll get a couple hits in, but he's going to trounce me. Yeah. And the speed gear allows me to like, 
it, it allows you to slow it down and kind of study the patterns a little bit more thoroughly and give you some breathing room. And so, yeah, like Imran was saying, like just tapping it occasionally just to slow things down, get some breathing room yeah. is super nice as like making it an easier ramp for people who don't play a ton of Mega Man, ga- Mega Man games and need a little help. And then for veterans, like it's just like makes you a little bit more deadly. Yeah, it was interesting because like even with that slowdown meter, there were still moments in the levels where I still was challenged, like in a good way, I'm saying. I didn't feel like it was uh, unfair, but it was uh, it was very rewarding. Yeah. And th- so it seems like when we were there playing it, you guys are still figuring out how the gear system recharges. Is that how does that recharge now? Do you just pick? Is it an item pickup thing? Uh, Imran, do you have any idea? I believe it's just a time cooldown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Imran's right. So basically, when you you toggle the power and the speed gear on and off, so it's like oh, I need some. You know, these platforms are falling too quickly. I want to slow them down for a while. Your meter starts to fill, and if you let it overfill, basically it. Mega Man overheats and then and you have dies. to wait for it to cool all the way down before you can use it because this ability is with you at the very beginning of the game. Uh, you know, you don't have to earn it from a robot master or something like that. Yeah. Uh, the backstory is that um, basically Dr. Wily um, remember this technology he was working on from his younger days before him and Dr. Light had a wedge driven between their relationship uh-huh. uh, and he goes back to this technology and he uses it to upgrade some robot masters that he has under his control. And He had this epiphany and the year 2018 or 20XX, it seems like late in the career to be yeah. like, aha, that's super important tech I was working on. It is, 20 years it is later. late in the career. You know, he's an older guy. Uh-huh. Uh, and then um, Light also made a, had a prototype. And so he, you know, Mega Man's like, hey, I, someone's got to do this. Like, give it give it to me. I know it's dangerous. Yeah, hook it to my veins. <laughs> uh, me. My robo veins. And so anyway, Mega Man gets it. And that's like the narrative conceit of it. So it kind of works. in the it, it fits that you have to manage it. And if you overuse it, it'll overheat. And yeah. you have to Are all to 10 down. other Mega Man games canon then? Does that like really happen? <laughs> and then it, was, it wasn't a dream, happen? Reeves. I don't know if you think that was a dream that you had, but it all happened. No, no, no. Canonically in the universe, like those things... Yeah. And then these are the same characters and like those things <laughs> yep. all happen to them. Well, ben, no, that's that's US history. <laughs> like I don't know. This is a documentary game. Whatever knows, Mega Man 7 didn't happen. That one, that one isn't canon anymore. Okay. It's confusing. It's, it's, it's complicated. All, it's all one long storyline. All right. You guys and, are giving me some S here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like it's a good question. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. It's Mega Man right Power Battles is canon, so pretty much anything counts at that point. Arm canon? Yeah. Are they different <laughs> universes then? Like Legends, that's a separate planet. Because that's a different Mega Man altogether. That's Volnut. I mean, yeah, there are different Mega Mans with it. Like the like Mega Man and Mega Man and Mega Man X, known as X, are different robots. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. they have met um, in the car- the original cartoon. In the cartoon, yes. Yeah, but but Doctor Light is that that link between both of them. But um, yeah. Okay. I got My it. wife considers me pretty Mega. Man, that's cute. You're a little Mega Man. It's your Mega Man. Yeah. I want to know, Tim. All right, you get this build in the office. When do you get it? How much do you play it? Oh. Is it stressful to be like, okay, I need to know this level inside and out because press like Imran are going to come in hot off playing the Switch release of the anniversary collection yeah. and all that stuff. So what's your process like of like trying to learn this new stage so that you know your crap? Uh, let me really break this down. Please. I played it a lot. Uh, uh, great. But is it an exciting day? Like, like an email oh, that yeah. goes out and it says, hey, new level in Mega Man 11 is here. Oh yeah, we got, the, we got the build, like download it and you know, first stage I played was Blockman's which was what we announced. So like when people, what people were introduced to, uh, like their first glimpse of Mega Man 11 was actually like the content that I saw first yeah. and I had like I you know I didn't really go in with many expectations I was like what is this and then I saw like the visual overhaul and then started playing with the gear system and it was a really wild day uh, like I really was super excited about it and then it's just that thing where it's like oh man we're like really far away from announce on this so just got to keep this to myself for now but it was crazy and yeah I was like playing on uh, normal um, sort of the default difficulty and was really, really, really challenged by it um, because, you know, you go in, you don't have any, um, I don't, you know, I didn't have any other robot master abilities. I had to learn this new uh, gear system, uh, the double gear system. And what's tricky about it and fun, though, is that you got like 30 years of muscle memory with Mega Man where like jump, shoot, slide occasionally, charge up a shot, and you just click into these old habits. And when there are these new abilities that you can have tap into at any time, there's no ammo involved, you have to like challenge yourself to find times to use them. And then, you know, the more I played... I just found like this new repertoire fitting in. Same way with like the weapon wheel on the right analog stick. Sure. I think that you guys had mentioned in the, the cover story, like that. You know, after hours, I just had this up. This like, okay, up and left is block block dropper. I'll use that real quick. Drop some blocks from above. 
augment that with the power gear quick, drop a huge avalanche of blocks, and then click it and be back to normal Mega Man. I have never, like, used more of a higher variety of, of Robot Master weapons, you know, while playing a Mega Man yeah, game. Yeah, really? And then, That's awesome. Yeah, that's good to hear. So, like, when the new level comes in, though, it's like, hey, Pulse Man's level is in. Mm-hmm. And then you just get to devour that. I mean, you get, like... Is there a Pulse a, Man or you just mean Fuse, Fuse Man? Fuse Man. Damn it! I don't want you to like uh, <laughs> the internet's gonna go wild here. Only confused. But, 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 but to be fair, there are little like um, EKG pulses, like zaps on the the details of the flooring. That's it. But do you get like a list of Easter eggs or like notes about that level from the developers, or is it just new builds in, download it, play it, get ready for? Press? It's a little bit of both. I mean, a lot of times, uh, I mean, we've had you know we'll get builds in well before you know we show them and, and prepare, but um, it'll, it's a combination of diving in, seeing what's there, and then having a conversation about it and talking through it and like what is you know and then you'll see a stage that's really early and you get the idea yeah. of it and then you just see it polish 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 every iteration it's super exciting it's gotta be weird as a Mega Man fan because usually you get a new new game and you get to experience it all right there but now you get this weird drip feed of like oh here's this one level and then another I'm assuming another month like this these like spits and burts of uh, as they say different, different feed of yeah. like like you're experiencing this game over the course of like two years you yeah. feel like like that. That's it's interesting. Cool. It, it is cool. Uh, I like. I've been super excited about it for a while because I mean, like, I'm a Mega Man fan too. So I've been waiting for a new entry just as long as everyone else has since, like, you know, Mega Man 10 came out, um, which you reviewed here, Game covered Farmer. here, and had yeah. to like go find a CRT because like it was on Wii so, and an, the imp- input leg is a nightmare if you are playing a Mega Man game. But um, Imran, what did you uh, what did you think about the like the boss battles themselves? So that was one of the things that, like, when you were talking about the power gear narrative, mm. like, that was one of the things I liked most about the ch- the changes with those gears is that the bosses have them. So, like, the block man boss fight, he turns into a kind of mecha block thing because it uses the power gear. So, like, it lets it lets them design bosses a different way rather than just, like, here's a Mega Man-sized robot that is jumping around, throwing away projectiles that he would use in the battlefield. Like, now it's... Here's that first phase, and now it's a essentially a shooting Sonic boss in a way, like a boss that's kind of looks like the Yellow Devil standing at the edge shooting bricks at you, and then it changes to a third form. So, like being able to, it, it kind of lets them stretch their legs and be able to make a more interesting boss design with multiple phases. Yeah, one one thing I I liked about like what what you said there is. I think that both bosses also like fill the room a little bit better. Like uh, mm-hmm. Imran was mentioning, like Blockman has a power gear, so after you get past a certain point of damage on him, he like almost like Voltrons in, like hit his body. He's like a really cute robot master, and uh-huh. then his body his body becomes the head of a larger robot that's like this hulking massive dude that fills the room and like swats at you. Um, and then Fuse Man, um, you know, has like a speed gear and so he's already fast, but then he has these nodes around the room and so he's zipping from node to node and, um, you know, did you you say nerd? Oh, no, nerds. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, great. We're we're all nerds. Uh, and then two, everybody go ahead. I forgot about that. You're zipping around the nodes. Beautiful old line. Yeah. These nudes, uh, these hot nudes, (laughs) um, and he's zipping around these, these, and, uh, you, you, you want to use the speed gear to kind of slow him down because he's just so fast. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a balancing act with that. And then, uh, I don't, I don't remember, Imran, did you get a chance to check out the, the sort of, uh, the double gear technique when your health dropped to like a critical, uh, level? I might have, okay. I mean, I know I've used it, uh, in some of the boss fights, but I don't recall exactly what it did. Like, I think it just, it made me stronger and slowed down time. Yeah. Yep. That's it. So basically you get the benefits of both of them at once, but it's like your last stand and, um, you really want to finish off the boss within that time frame because if you don't, and once it, you, that power runs its course, you're like reduced to the super long cooldown, and you can only shoot one Buster shot at a time. So it's like um, this is a huge risk reward element. Yeah. Um, huh. But yeah. It's an interesting game, and it's cool too because like the last two games were these like loving throwbacks to what the original like NES series was, mm-hmm. and now after they of course they did that, so now they're jumping. You could say forward, yeah. Uh, with the visuals and the gear system, changes it up quite a bit. Yeah, it really feels like the biggest like shake up. Yeah, it's to nice the, to like, get the franchise in a while. Mm-hmm. Get nostalgia out of that system, and let's try and create something new there. Because that's the. I mean, the, I think the visuals were the most immediate, obvious thing that changed. But then that's why I was, and which is super exciting, and the team's doing an awesome job. And you know, you guys talked to like Yuji Ishihara, yeah, all, the artist, the artist yeah. behind all of everything that went into that. But like, 
I mean, that's cool. It's a pretty game, but the the as a fan, the double gear system is like what really differentiates it, I think, from like the rest of the series. So, uh, which track so far from Mega Man Eleven has been the most stuck in your head? Because what do we got from all the music you've heard? Have you been whistling one more than the others? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, Fuse Man's stage music is the music that we used in the announcement trailer. Oh, interesting. And it's just okay. really high energy and and fun. Um, so I'd say that one. So is this the E3 showing? Are you guys going to be showing it at E3? Any hints about what's coming up there? Stay tuned. Stay tuned on that oh, one. Oh, boy. Uh, mm. Another thing I want to mention. Yeah. Just super quick, get it out there. Uh one, uh, thanks for having me on the show, guys. Oh, yeah. it's super good to be back. back. Uh, these are busy times pre E three, but like, it was it was worth uh, stopping in. Is it more stressful on your side of the fence than the press side? Do you think? Uh, it's a, you I think both? it's just a trade off. You know, it's yeah. like a it's like a uh, you know getting a party ready. You know what I mean? And then once the party's there, like you're you're there and you're showing it off. And like E three will still be tough, but like it's like. You you guys are like trying to plan for a surprise party you know is happening and it's just like uh who's gonna be there who should I be ready to talk to hundred percent also we need to hit up seventy five other parties at that yes. quick stop yeah and then yeah. there's the the ones that you didn't even know that were happening and right. then you gotta like do like Google some research in a bathroom stall for interview questions real quick like oh my god the interview's coming up so it's a totally different world um but yeah no it's gonna be an awesome show um. I'm excited personally because I love surprises. So yeah? all the stuff that I don't know about is what I'm excited about. What are you going to be doing at E3? Are you going to be just grabbing journalists and leading them to the next appointment? Are you going to be doing interviews? What are you going to be doing? Yeah, Spending a lot of time in that bathroom stall. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be Googling <laughs> a lot. Again, trying to find answers <laughs> to interview <laughs> questions. Yes, you guys, get, you'll know where to yeah. find me. Uh, no, yeah, I'll be at the Capcom booth just talking to people, showing the game off and uh, maybe some interviews and whatnot. So cool. That sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. So... It's, it's Mega Man 11, guys. Oh, the other exciting thing <laughs> is that uh, it's coming out on October 2nd. Um, oh, so we man. announced the release date, which is like fun, you know, to have out there. Like, guys, putting a ring on it. It's hey, coming. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's basically on everything. Like PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC. Yeah. Um, there's new difficulty modes. So if you have been, like even the casual, like the, the quote unquote, like casual mode is more like, a normal by today's standards and then normal mode is pretty difficult and then there's like a mm. newcomer mode where if you fall into a pit like beat will come and pull you out of it the little robot bird and yeah. spikes won't kill you in one hit so there's like more ways to get into it uh because these games can be super tough yeah but, yeah, yeah. So i played on casual and i was like okay this should be no problem and it like i didn't get a game over but i died more than i would think <laughs> but you got through it yeah yeah reeves i did well <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> ben Reeves, if you're watching the video version, he's been messing with the mouse on Imran's laptop and he took the move <laughs> of getting it off Imran's face so it didn't look like a booger or something, but then he just <laughs> moved it like two inches onto his cheek instead of, instead of just wiping it off the I'm screen. Just brushing it it's up. driving me insane. <laughs> well, sometimes you do that and it'll disappear. I assume right. that's it what was happening. So, it was so good to be I feel there. loved. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved. feel loved in this Ben sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing back in town anyway? Uh, there's a wedding. Uh, no, I came here for yours? you guys specifically. Oh, okay. Yeah, you are putting that ring on it after oh. all. Cute. Anything else you want to talk about with Game Informer? Oh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Leo in the booth. Um, somebody, check the garbage. Uh, Aaron Bivens mm-hmm. from Florida wrote in with 200 nice things about uh, Game Informer, and I'm sure and you're we immediately some of those. threw it in the garbage. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> we panicked and uh, just decided to check into the garbage. Well, so, you know, if Leo finds it, maybe there's some nice compliments. Would that would that be enjoyable? Um, yeah, just you know, I can put that in my pocket and read it a little bit later when I need it. Okay, Leo, do you have any in ready the to go there? Stall. No, uh, it's not in here. All right, we'll take care of that in yeah. post. That's no big deal. <laughs> but hey, you guys are doing a great job with the show. Like, I still listen every week. That's oh, unbelievably sweet of you. Uh, what do we need to do more of? Don't don't change anything. Get get Leo on the mic more. Or guest uh, okay. host. Cereal's doing great. Yeah. Uh, oh, did you see his uh, cereal review? Cereal uh, is there series? another one? No. No, no. no I, I mean, I, I think it'll be a while before Nintendo releases more cereal. Um, is Joe too negative? What do you think about that? Mm-mm. He's just Joe. He's, He's got to deal on with podcast. it. No, I'm, I'm into it. I like it because he laughs so much. Yeah. yeah. Anybody that laughs on the podcast, I you think You know, he doesn't laugh that much in real life. No, he really no. doesn't. On the podcast, he and, genuinely and laughs more. to be more. clear, the podcast is not real life. <laughs> That's correct. At all. In no way. Joe is way more fun to hang out on the podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he wouldn't argue with you on that. That's I don't true. think at all. No. Imran, Reeves, Tim, thank you for talking about Mega Man, guys. Thank you. Uh, do you want to thank sign you. off the show, Tim? Uh, so thank you for watching this episode of the Game Informer Show. Or listening. Um, 
watching or listening to this, I'm a little rusty, this episode of the Game Informer Show. Um, you know, if you uh, have any comments or, you know, there's something you want to see, hit us up on Twitter at... Uh, <laughs> What I- Imran are you doing? And that ben, Imran and Ben and uh, Leo. It's all one uh, GI show it's one Twitter fused, tag yeah. and uh, Schlorp uh, Door Door Bador Record. And um, that's all she wrote, as they say. Thank you. Thank you.